Good afternoon. Is this coming through? Hey, there we go. Awesome. How's everybody doing? It's been a couple of weeks. Hope you're all good. I think I've posted this everywhere already. My, my head from normal. Hey, Ragov. Cool. Awesome. Man, the uh, the weather today, it's gone crazy. Like, as nice as the north of England is, it is just, the weather is so dreadful. It's just, like, really not very pleasant to, uh, to even, like, think about going outside. Just, it's just not what you want, really. As much as I want to, like, build my own little, like, homestead, farmstead, small holding thing, I just can't imagine doing it in the north of England. It just doesn't really inspire inspire you when you look outside, and it's like that, especially when it's, like, November, and it, you know it's getting darker and wetter, and you end up with your day. Because the sun will set at, like, 3.30, 4 o'clock in the middle of winter, and then it's, uh, yeah, there's just, there's no light. There's no light ever. And it's raining all the time. So, uh, oh, Steam finally has 3.2 alpha, does it? I've been waiting for the Steam updates to come through. Let me just, uh, let me put my phone back on charge so we don't, don't lose internet. There we go. Uh, what are we up to today? We are going to be making... So, well, somebody... I think it was Leo put a comment on my herringbone shader tutorial, which is a good tutorial, but I, I think, um, yeah, we're going to be making some herringbone. I also want to do, like, a normal laying pattern, just, like, straight laying, which I guess we can do with the accumulate node so we can get some different length boards. I'd also quite like to do a Versailles pattern. Uh, Versailles is like a really interesting floorboard pattern. It's quite fancy. Uh, it's actually really quite fancy. Uh, it's sort of like um, it's sort of like a cross. So it looks like it's woven, kind of woven. I mean, it's all flat, obviously, because it's a floor. But um, yeah, so it's like a kind of open cross with squares in the corners. Um, just got to think about how to do it. So. Um, and I want to do these as generators um, for like a future, hopefully not too future, but a future ETK expansion. Because um, I've been kind of teasing the idea of expansions for a little while. And we set up ETK before Christmas to be able to do expansion packs. So you can, you'll just get like another menu category in the add-on. Um, so I'd like to do one for like interior things. I've noticed a few people have been doing it's difficult, I don't, I basically, uh, you could try some more comments. Oh yeah, like parquet flooring, yeah. Also, um, it'd be kind of interesting to try and do some marquetry, which is like where you cut veneer to specific shapes and sizes, uh, just so that you can basically sort out the rotation of timber grain and have it pick it up from a, Texture. I'm not really sure how you do it. Like you need to have some way to detect edges in your texture, I guess. So I don't think we'd be able to do that one yet. Maybe with Sverjok, but then that's not really going to be part of ETK. Um, but yeah. So I've no anyway. I've noticed a lot of people have been doing a bunch of stuff for things like pipe generators and stair generators, spiral staircases walls, things like that. And I obviously don't want to like overlap with other people's products too much. Um, but at the same time, I also want to have quite like a comprehensive suite of useful tools and like entire sets of tools rather than it just being like a one-off thing, like oh, it just generates pipes or it just generates stairs or it just generates floors. I want it to be like this one generates all of your interior surfaces and it has uh, all of these things. 
Have you seen Chip Walters' simple sci-fi add-on? You bought it, and there's an there's an ETK node in it. Yeah, I didn't know. I know. I was talking to Chip about it when he made it, because um, he he was making it on the server on the Discord server. So yeah. Anyway, let me let me get Blender up here. I've been having some weird dreams recently. They're really vivid. I've, I've talked about um, how I have like really vivid dreams before and they're, they are so immersive. Like if, if they're just, they're so immersive. I literally cannot explain. I, it's like how you want VR to be, like VR games. Um, because they're just like, you just, you're hundred percent invested. You just think you're there. Because you're kind of in that like hypnagogic state where you're in between waking and dreaming. Um, but then, because like when I'm fully asleep, I don't really, I have dreams, but I don't, they, they don't always necessarily make sense. And they're not so like continuous. They'll, they'll be like launching off from my sort of hypnagogic state dreams, which are semi-directed. Like they're, they're often started off or like I am, I kind of imagine a scenario or whatever, and then my brain just takes over. Um, but uh, do I have sleep paralysis? Yeah, I actually really do get sleep paralysis badly. Why do I look so tired? It's because my sleep is basically useless because I spend my entire night just dreaming rather than, uh, rather than doing something. But yeah, last night was a really weird one because it was so often uh, they're characters that are like, they're like series of dreams. So the characters, locations and events will be somewhat like continuous for, you know, a couple of weeks at a time. But then last night it was like characters I'd never met before in places I'd never seen before, which was cool. But at the same time, it was like, so, <laughs> this is going to sound really weird. So I, I turned up, this is a, like, this is a dream. This isn't reality. Um, I was like, I was, I was there, but then there was somebody who was like arranging a marriage for me. And I didn't like, I didn't really want to, but now I didn't really understand what was going on. So I was like, I don't want to make a fuss because like I, d I just don't understand what's going on like maybe I'm supposed to like go through with this um it's kind of like improv but everybody else knows what they're doing and you're the one that's improvising um so th there was just yeah there was this like arranged marriage but then it was it was so strange it was just really bizarre and uh because it was an arranged marriage I like made sure that this other person knew that they could just like leave at any time because I didn't want them to feel like they were tied to me out of their, like something that was out of their choice. And uh, yeah, what happened? It was, so, so she ended up meeting somebody or she, no, she told me that there was somebody else. And I was like, that's fine. You just, you go. But then I was just like, I was distraught. It was so weird. I was like, I was so invested in this like arranged marriage thing. It was heartbreaking. Anyway. Onto funner topics, let's jump into Blender. So, it sounds like Salvador Dali dreams. <laughs> yeah. yeah, new season. Um, there's a new ETK node. It's a bit of a change of pace, isn't it? Uh, there are distribute points in volumes. There we go. Let me just, uh, actually I don't need to save this. So, yeah, distribute points in volume basically takes a, uh, you can check out, but you can never leave, <laughs> Pink Floyd. Um, if I just, let me throw in an object here, let's use a mesh primitive icosphere. And then I can hear my hard drive spinning. Cool. All right. Um, you just get teleported to the next morning. That sounds great. Which is better, Critter or Photoshop? Uh, on your CV, Photoshop, for generally using and being a nice place to work and a good community, Critter. Um, so, utilities, distribute points in volume. What, already there? It's just, it's so easy to use. Uh, so this is a cool node because it basically just makes a grid of points that fits within whatever you give it. 
So I can make this whatever size and it's just going to fill it with points according to this density. I was thinking that maybe I need to do the like cube root of the density value because it's at the moment it's not really. Let me just try that. And we also need to, I, I want to add a uh, realize instances node to the mesh inputs because uh, although at the moment you, you'll see in a moment you have to do the realize instances on the, out, on the outside. So I'm definitely going to add that to the inside at some point. Let me just do this. If you ever want to do a cube root, by the way, because there's obviously there's no like uh, root node, you can just do to the power of and then like one over the value, so like one third in this case. Um, so I'm just doing this because, oh, what? <laughs> Is that going in multiple? Oh yeah, there it is. That needs to be in two places. So I just thought that would be a little bit more useful maybe. Well, I don't know, now the numbers go really high. Let's leave it off. <laughs> There's no end to how cursed they get. Yeah, that's basically true. Um, uh, the workflow in mind, the node is in ETK. So it's part, it's part of my add-on, which you can find linked in the, uh, in the description. Yeah, it's, uh, it's part of ETK. So the, you do have to be careful with the density because obviously it's going in three axes. Um, one will be like one point per meter. And then two is going to be two points per meter. But because it's cubed, then suddenly you're actually looking at eight. So if I go up to two, then suddenly you can see there's loads more points. Um, so that's why I was going to put a soft limit on it of like 20. But then when you're working on something small, anyway, right, okay. I posted a video on Twitter showing like how to make some bushes with it and it's really easy. So what we can do is we can take something like, I'll just do it procedurally here. Let's use a grid and let's make this a bit bigger. Let's go like 10 by 10 and we'll go for a few more. Something like that is fine. Okay. Now let's do a noise displace. Uh, displace noise. There we go. Make this a bit smaller stronger something like that is fine how's the distribution gone um it's literally so that it should be a continuous distribution uh it's literally a 3d grid it's kind of like voxels right? it's just it's creating a 3d grid of points and then it's culling any points which exist outside the uh outside the objects uh, that's why there's some settings on it which are like accurate versus fast I'll show you why they're useful in a moment and also a backface check, which is good sometimes, but then like sometimes if you have a mesh where there's no intersections and you know that for sure, like no mesh intersections, then you can turn on backface check and it'll work really well with fast and it'll be faster. But then if you use multiple meshes or if they're intersecting, then it becomes slightly more difficult to use the backface check or if you're using non-manifold geometry, uh, because, um, non-manifold geometry you can be sort of like inside in terms of the bounds of the surface like limited surface but the the um yeah the actual like checking the back faces can cause an issue there are you planning on getting into other software such as substance painter um personally i don't like textures i'm not really going to be producing much more content on textures procedural shading stuff like that i might do a few but they're I don't, I'm I'm interested in making geometry. Really, I'm interested in making like physical inverted commas things. It's why I really liked vector displacement. But now we actually just have geometry nodes, which is good. Uh, I will probably look at other software like Unity and Unreal, though. People keep talking to me about working for Unity. And I'm just like, well, maybe I should. 
Maybe that's like my five year plan or 10 year plan or something is like to end up working at Unity. Um, anyway, right. So we've got our floor roughly and uh, we can, I'm just gonna bring in some grass from Botanic. So let's just spawn a few of these. Just gonna grab the wild ones here. There we go. Hide that. Um, I keep trying to save, it's like compulsive. Uh, so we need to put grass on the floor. Let's use the foliage node because that's really easy. Uh, collection, grass, and there we go. Let's have grass in, let's make this a bit denser. Go to around about 100, it's probably about, about right. So the, <laughs> the issue with me working for Unity is that all of the job listings um, all of the job listings that I've looked at or been sent are dependent on you knowing certain skills which I don't have. For example, rigging or C++. Um, now I can rig, I'm just not very good at it uh, and I'm not very well practiced. So uh, how do you select multiple values to change, like the grid size? Uh, you click in one and then you drag down. So like if I click in the top of my vector and then I drag down, now I have all of them. I know it hides my mouse when I do that, but I'm literally just dragging down, like drawing, clicking, and then dragging down. You can do that anywhere in Blender and it works outside of, um, <coughs> excuse me, it works outside in like multiple uh, things as well. Uh, let me just undo that, there we go. Do I recommend learning ray marching? If you need ray marching, then go for it. Generally, I would say no. Uh, I've used ray marching a couple of times, but I think unless you're doing very specific things or if you're specifically trying to like fake shaders, make your own, are they called frag shaders? Um, I just don't know if it's really worthwhile. Ragov, are we doing herringbone right now or is this something else like a warm up? This is just, uh, this is like a warm up. I'll be done fairly quick, don't worry. Um, all right, so we've got our ground with our grass. Let me get some cycles in here. All right, and I should probably get my floor back, which is this one. And I will also add a material to it. So material and we'll just summon, I'm using materialic as well, just a good one. Good one for your quick materials. There we go. All right. Um, so then for making bushes, this is like a really nice, simple process. It's what I always used to do with fir chalk for making bushes. Because if you have like just, I mean, I don't know if you've got bushes outside, but if you look outside and you find a bush, uh, you can often not actually see the branches. So it just got me thinking like, you don't need to make branches and if you don't make branches and you don't have to do all of this weird janky instancing on skin stuff, it's just, it's just, just distribute the leaves in a volume and it's going to make people think it's a tree. Like if it's enough density, then it'll work. The distribute points in volume node is not super well, super well, it's not very well optimized because we don't have loops. Um, it's just one of the many things that would be much better with nested data and loops. So uh, anyway, let's just continue here. So making bushes is quite easy. You just make the shape of the bush. And to do this, I'm going to instance uh, a bunch of IQ spheres. So let's grab a points on surface or points on faces. And we're just gonna do press on disk here or maybe, maybe just random actually. We're not going to have many, just a handful. And I want to now instance on the points. I want to instance an icosphere. And I also want my icosphere to be centered on its base. I want it to be sat on the bottom. So easy way to do this is with the align mesh by mesh, or you can just use the uh, transform node. There we go. All right, uh, let's make this random scaled as well. And I'll go from 0.5 to 
something like 1.5, maybe a bit tall there. That looks fine. And then, uh, so I'm going to do two passes of this. I could at this point just add leaves to everything, but you'll end up with very blobby trees. So I think uh, what I want to do is I want to make, uh, I want to instance smaller icospheres inside these ones. So distribute points in volume. Chuck that on there. Just going to take a sec to update. Oh wait, this is when you need the realize instances node. This is why I need to add it to the node. There we go. So a bunch of points inside our shapes. Rather than doing volume, maybe you can do a number of overlapping shapes, increasing, decreasing in size, putting layers on each layer. Um, need a, <laughs> yeah, Nick, shit. yeah. Um, so rather than doing a, a, rather than doing a volume, maybe you could do a number of overlapping shapes, increasing, decreasing, so putting leaves on each layer. Oh, you mean like just basically instancing, again, you would need ideally loops for that. And I think when you do that kind of instancing, it's still actually quite heavy. Like this, even though it's generating several thousand points, how many is it doing? 11,000 points in seven milliseconds. Because it's a line node, it's actually pretty quick. Um, we've got it set to fast at the moment as well. That doesn't seem to make a difference, so yeah. So let's go for really low density here. I'm just going to go something like this. That's fine. And then we will instance on points and icosphere. And we'll do another different random value for the scale on these ones, make them a bit smaller. We've got between 1 to. There's a way to get these to like scale correctly. Anyway. Something maybe like this. So you've got a bit of shape to them now. Might add a few more just to kind of block them out. So we're getting all of these nice shapes. Still pretty quick. And uh, now we can just do another distribute points in volume. Again, realize instances. Uh, new nodes, yeah. Now, I've only added two. I've added the this one and I've added flip index, which is from that tutorial I did the other day, which is just useful if you do power lines. So, I mean, and all other things as well, but generally people are making power lines when they need it. Uh, let's go a little bit denser. I have added a density factor on this one, by the way. Um, just because uh, you might want to use no, uh, like a noise field or something. Uh, or you can do the, you can do like, a, so, uh, oh, who was it he was saying it before about the points from the surface, but you could do like um, a geometry proximity realize instances on here, and then you can do distance from the faces, map range on this, set this into your density factor. And then you can have uh, like a shell, basically, something like that. Um, which is pretty neat. Or uh, if you have something where you have like branching structures inside, then you can make sure that you actually just instance your leaves near, like near, using geometry proximity. Now you can set your density factor as the proximity to the branches, so that's a pretty neat way of working. Uh, you can also set this to be just like grid if you turn off randomize. So you can get some pretty nice moire, moire patterns doing that. Um, and obviously if you're doing something, if you're doing Minecraft renders, which I know a few people do, then you can do that like this, and then you can just instance a cube. Um, anyway, so now we just need some leaves. I'm going to grab them from can't remember. I think it's the it's the new Grasswold pack. Plants. 
Yeah, the Island Reed. I think this is the one I used yesterday. I should have generated mesh previews. Um, my man, how's it going, buddy? So, leaf. I'm just going to grab these LED zero ones. Oh wait, the the ones which are zero. There we go, zero zero. These all the same. Ah, we'll just bring these in. So these are, these are like ground ivy. So it's kind of a weird thing to use for this, but it's actually really useful because you've already got a bit of an idea of a stem and you've got the leaves. So with enough density, actually looks really good. Uh, so I'll use, I'm just gonna delete most of these. I'll use, I'll use both of these, but I'll just make sure that they're maybe, I'll cut that off as well. Control right click to get my lasso selection, delete vertices, and this one as well. Let me just grab, put it on the origin. Control right click, delete, okay. Uh, and then I'll just use this as a collection. Uh, solid view, put these into their own, just put them in hidden for now. And instance on points a collection, which is going to be the hidden one, separate and reset, instances, pick instance, and like already, it looks, they look kind of bushy, um, let's zoom out a little bit. I know the denoising is going to absolutely kill these, but we go, I want them to be bigger, but random, and I want to randomize the rotation as well. So. You can always, if you're doing this on branches, you can like transfer the normals from your base branches to your local things by face, uh, like nearest face interpolated. That's going to give you proper rotation based on an actual geometry, even though these are not attached to that geometry. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to randomize it. Mm, that's probably fine. Uh, maybe minus one to positive one. And then I'll do another one uh, for the scale, but I'll just do that with a float instead. Random float, Let's throw this on here. We're gonna aim for, I think two, I think they wanna be way bigger. Yeah, they look a lot more shrubby now. Uh, deviation of 0.5, that's fine. My GPU is going crazy. And I can now just Join it up to everything else. So there we go. Try and get a good view on this. And there goes Blender. But you kind of, you understand anyway. <laughs> you can scatter leaves inside a bush shape and it will like create a bush. So there we go. I need to, uh, I need to make sure that doesn't happen again. <laughs> what happened to Blender? That was really not happy. I wonder if this is, I don't have 2.3.2, do I? I don't think Steam's done an update. No. Um, how would it look in Eevee? It would look fairly similar. I think, I mean, obviously it just depends on your shaders. Let me grab. Here's one I did earlier. See you later, KSP. How's it going, bud? Have a good one. Uh, I do often change my desktop picture because I I like um, I like pretty pictures. Unsplash, by the way, if pe people who like the desktop pictures, Unsplash is a good place. Um, I have a folder which I've been like collecting wallpapers for years. So I have literally like hundreds and hundreds of wallpapers in here and they're pretty nice. Like there's some nice ones in here. It's kind of a weird thing to collect, but hey ho. Uh, how would it look in Eevee? So obviously I've not got my lighting set up for Eevee. 
But as long as you've got decent shaders on your on your stuff, I would say that the Grassworld ones should be good shaders. But I'm not really, I'm not too sure actually. Um, I mean, it's alright. You could probably do with some lighting. Scene world, scene lights. Oh, it's chugging. Come on. Add a sunlight. Increase the power. It's probably too much, but. You get the idea. All right. I love how Eevee is like the real time renderer and then Cycles is so much faster. Eevee just does not scale well at all. Like as soon as you start having a few hundred objects, it's just like not interested. I definitely need to do something about my PC cooling as well. It's crazy. Hardware info. Sorry. I just want to keep an eye on my uh, temperatures just while I do this. So let's get on to the main event. We're going to be making herringbone. Well, let's let's start off simple. Let's start off with like a normal, just straight laying floorboard pattern. And um, I want to make sure that we've got it set up like a tool that's useful. So your input is basically the floor area. Um, screen here we go let me save so we've got something to come back to for the inevitable crash um, tutorials streams floorboards how can I learn to create the lotus temple you did in Svetrock? Um that's a good question it's been a long time I don't even know if that file still works if it still works I'm happy to share it um, oh, I've got so many flies in here. They like I I repotted one of my plants. I've got like I've got so many flies now that have just come out of the compost. Foolish, foolish of me. So I need to find my Spurchock folder. The latest temple was ages ago. So I would expect it to be broken. Um. I'm surprised that you've actually that you've seen it. Uh, do we still have internet? Cool. <laughs> Is that your PC nice? Yeah. Oh, do you know what? It actually kind of does work. Kind of. We'll see. Uh, so fixed length boards or random length. <coughs> yeah, so there'll be random length, sorry. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, random length, but it won't unfortunately because we don't have loops. It won't be able to take it from an input. Um, have I got this key framed? Key framed. Let me change the, oh yeah, totally do. Oh, cool. All right. Um, yeah, so there's... I want I basically want it to be... Um, so that you can input the floor size and it will generate all of the boards for you because I think that's the only way that I can make sure that I'm correcting the UV scaling for textures and also... Um, Oh, but I want it to be an option that you can put in your own your own floorboards because you might have like sculpted some or have some real excuse me sorry some real um, like sculpted ones 
Wait, I said skull tooth. Some real stylized ones. Um, let me just make sure this file. Uh, technically, how this works is there's a bunch of points and there's a bunch of arcs. It's actually quite simple. Um, <laughs> post it on Instagram. Thank you. Uh, maybe I will. I can like re-render it or something. There's. This is not the best way to make it. This was while I was still really early with learning. Yeah, this was my 18th thing I did with Svechok, so I was like still really early using the nodes. Um, all I did was I made one thing and then I, so I made like one of these sections, if I just draw that. So like coming down from one of the arches down kind of like that. Uh, so it's just these three fins and then mirrored and then radial arrayed. Uh, you could write an Arduino serial bridge to Blender. Definitely could. Um, we know some people. Uh, Matisse, who does Twitch streams. He does stuff with Blender, Unity, and Arduinos. Very cool stuff. Um, yeah, it's literally just start in tangent and then lofting surfaces. But I will... Um, I will definitely, I will share this once I'm done streaming today and I'll put it in resources on Discord. So let me just make a note of that. I just don't want to do it while I'm streaming because my internet. Uh, share Lotus. There we go. Cool. Sorry if you can hear the rain. It's pretty, uh, it's getting pretty bad out there. All right, floorboards, let's go back. So let's make a text editor with a wish list. So input floor, um, ideally also input uh, Matisse, if that's who you're talking about. Uh, Matisse is the let me find his, I'll, I can just link you to his Twitch. He does cool stuff. Um, Matisse. I'm gonna struggle to find him now because there's, there's another famous guy called Matisse. Famous artist. Do I have Discord open? I've got Critter open apparently. Discord, here we go. Bear with. Matisse is great. He's so nice. Uh, he's really good with just like helping people as well. So if you're interested in Arduinos, definitely like pop him a message or just like jump into one of his Twitch streams. Matisse. I'm sure he sent me links for them before. They're so sort of. Uh, Surreal as well. Matisse Tech. Oh, do you know what? He's live now. Uh, go and say hi to Matisse. Links in the, disc the, the links in the chat. That's so funny. But yeah, his stuff is always really cool. Um. And it's like so surreal as well. He does these, like his character is like on, he, he has his avatar. Wait, I can just actually bring up his thing. So he has, yeah, his character is like on a generated model. And it's just, and I made that, oh my God, I can't believe he's still using it for his subs. That's so funny. Anyway. He's really nice. He knows a lot about Arduinos. He knows a lot about bringing sensors into Blender for controlling stuff. Um, so yeah, check him out. All right, let's go back to our floorboards. So what I want to do is if I add a plane and this is two by two, so we'll go for something like this, right? And let's say this is our room shape. We're just gonna make it an inconvenient shape to start with. Maybe. 
an edge on that and we'll just make a little alcove as well all right <laughs> yeah he's live right now um so if let's say this is my floor this is what i want to be able to bring into geometry nodes and then have geometry nodes just be like okay i'm going to put floor on here because that's useful because then you can actually use this when you're actually making your scenes in a convenient way um and that's what we like geometry nodes tools or just like any tools should be more convenient than they're not so let's sort this out uh, this is going to be our straight floorboards <laughs> he does programming which is scary yeah same i really gotta get into programming i think i need I, I actually need to buy a book i'm not good at learning from videos which is kind of ironic but um yeah, I need to buy a book on like C++ so I can, or just object oriented programming. It's just so confusing to me. Um, so let's just call this one floorboards. This can be our like vanilla one. I'm gonna make it a fake user as well. When you're making tools, make them fake user because if you're like, if you have a file with 10 different tools and you're only looking at one at a time, and then you close Blender and you reopen it and nine of the tools that you've spent the whole day developing have been like deleted. It's very annoying. Alrighty. So we have our floor. This is basically going to be a cutting object at the end. So we don't need to worry too much about it. We just need to make sure that we're filling the space, at least the space, with boards. Um, uh, you do programming and geometry nodes and shaders are scary. The thing with nodes is it's like multiple guess or choice depending on how much you know so um, that's what i really like like the easiest school exams are the ones where you get a choice from answers but like with programming you have to know you like what what it, you have to know you can't because you got all you have is the letters on the keyboard <laughs> that's it you have to know what the commands are or you have to know enough to search for it on stack exchange to steal somebody else's code it's just I don't know. On, with something like geometry nodes, I can just be like, well, it's probably maths. And then it's probably one of these. And you can just keep trying until something's like, oh, yeah, that works. So it's the maths you struggle with. Yeah. I think that's true for a lot of people. It was definitely true for me when I started. And learning how to make shaders. I said this to somebody a few days ago, actually. Make shaders on a 2D plane. Uh, and that's like the easiest way to learn because you've only got two dimensions and all you're thinking about, you're not really thinking about like materials. I, I mean like make pattern generators. Things like herringbone are a really good use of like, uh, of learning the tools because it's like you can learn snap, you can learn floor, you're going to learn division, multiplication. You're going to understand like continuous Cartesian spaces and how to actually divvy that up and use that as an input for a final thing. So... I would definitely say that it is uh, a good place, a good place to start. Language is easier to read than write. Yeah, I can usually get a sense of what's going on if I read code, but there's no way in hell I could write it. All right, the, the, the limitation of this system is going to be that if you have input boards, they're going to need scaling down to one by one meter so that we can like normalize the scale to work with it. But is that a problem? Can we get geometry nodes to do it? Maybe. But then again, maybe we can't because we don't have loops. So I was thinking like, what if you have five different size boards and you put them in and you want to scale them all to one, one by one? I don't think you could do it. I think you could only scale them as like a bunch of boards, like a group. In Because does the, the bounding box doesn't output field, does it? It just outputs a single value. Which means we can't actually use it in any meaningful way. Well, we'll have to try. So to start off with, we're just going to create a board, a single board, which is one meter by one meter. And then we're going to create a 
bunch of stacks, which we're going to do with the accumulate node. Um, it's fairly self-explanatory. We basically have a bunch of lines and we just need to, starting in one position, make them all at least a certain length with random size boards. Um, do I know what I'm doing? Not even slightly. I find the accumulate notes so confusing as well. Uh, I saw I saw some people doing like equal length towers. I think it was Jacques. Um, Juliet, yeah, saying that you were going to do traditional high poly modeling after November. I remember you saying that. I remember a lot of people saying that actually, myself included. And uh, it's just not happened. Oswin, is there a node to control a bit of Python code? Not in geometry nodes, not yet. At some point there should be, but not yet. Um, it's a shame. We need a line node. Uh, mesh primitive, mesh line. You'll have to forgive me as I re rework out how this works. Uh, we're going to be setting the position. Combine X, Y, Z. And this is going to go into the... We have to take the average, don't we? So leading and trailing, because we because we have our origin central in our grid. Uh, for this to work, we need to add together and divide by two. It's a shame we don't have a mix node yet, but never mind. So that's our average position. Uh, we can instance on points. Yeah, they're so much more fun since we got fields rather than the old attribute system. The old attribute system was a chore to work with. Some of my node graphs, like uh, vector rotate, the old vector rotate for 2.93. I wonder if I've still got it actually. I should somewhere have 2.93 still. It was just like the most ridiculous line of attributes. Stuff always goes on my other monitor. There we go. Oh, it's got the old theme as well. Do we not have it? Um, have this this one. Oh yeah, oh my god. Back when it was all capitals and so messy. Vector rotate, where are you? Utilities attribute vector rotate. So for a start it's a very inconvenient node having to type in all of your attributes. But then when you go inside it and it's just like what is this nightmare? so confusing and you've got to like you can't just fall on your feet when you're doing this like you have to do all of this stuff with coming up with all of your you have to un you have to know it in advance there's no way to accidentally or like logically as an artist visually visualize your way through a problem i mean this is just such a nightmare yeah pre-fields was horrible but like i don't know a little bit of a flex this was this flower scene splash screen was all made with the old system so it's possible it's just I don't think it's really possible without the toolkit like the toolkit was so useful back then I think it's still useful but now you can actually like you can just do stuff yourself you can make whatever you want now all right we're gonna be instancing our grid sorry this is taking me a little while um we're gonna be these are our centers. Let's go in the X direction. All right, that's that's working. And I think we can just plug in a random value. 
and I can plug this into the X one and one, plug this into my scale. All right, that seems to have worked. And it seems to keep working. So right now what we need is how are we going to make this work? Um, okay. So if we have an index in here, which is going to be, we need this in steps. So people who have been following my videos recently, steps you do with divide and floor. Um, <laughs> you bought the toolkit, but still have no idea how to use geometry nodes. Well, that's fine. Ho hopefully the toolkit has given you a few like high level stuff, like noise displace or uh, the foliage node, which is just like, you want to instance foliage, just use this. In fact, you can add this like as a modifier and then you don't even need to do anything else. You can literally just do that. And now you have everything just as a modifier. All right. So divide and floor for my the number of points. How am I going to make sure that this is at least the size of the room? I guess I can make sure that my minimum size is at least like the, uh, I don't know. So if my minimum, to make it at least the size, let's say it's 10 meters long. If my minimum size was one, then it's going to take at least 10. No, at, at most 10. If every single one was miraculously the minimum size. So that's fine. So we can just do it based on that. So it will be bounding box based. Which means um, we can start making this a little bit more interconnected in a moment. So divide and floor, uh, the <laughs> you thought you missed the stream, no, don't worry. Uh, we need to know how many points as well, which we can also do on the bounding box because we're going to say, okay, I need the bounding box. I need the bounding box. So the bounding box is going to tell me how big this is. And that's going to allow me to set my minimum, and my maximum size. And that's going to let me know how many points there are in a row, at least. Um, yeah, so it's going to be bigger, basically. All it has to do is be bigger. That's the main thing. Uh, and then I'll just, I will, I don't want to, but I will have to Boolean. So I'll basically solidify the ground plane, cut through my planes using it as a Boolean cutter. And then I'll extend all of these things down. And there you go, floorboards, instant floorboards. Um, and we've got all of these points, these positions, which we can use for our rotation centers, which means that we can also make them look old. So that's good. All right. Let me do this. So this is our control J. Has anybody else found this recently? If you click and drag on a frame, maybe it's a good thing actually, because it always used to be really annoying that you couldn't do that. Okay, I'm not going to complain about that. I'm glad that happens. Uh, this is going to be our board centers. All right. Okay, I think I can see a way through now. So that's good. I'm going to um, we are going to have to have a way to switch the direction as well. Um, or at least rotate it. Which might be fine because we can just actually pre-rotate the floor plan so that we get the bounding box correct. And then 
rotate the boards afterwards and then crop them or like yeah anyway we'll do it all based on like before and after rotations uh, to make the floor more realistic add micro bevel to the edges of the boards i can do um well actually i can't do because <laughs> geometry knows can't do it so uh, we can do it with modifiers um <laughs> yeah christoph it's just like oh i just want to move it you can still move it by the header so that's all right um let's grab my i'm going to do my boards in the y-axis just by default but then people can rotate by a certain angle manually as they want um so there's a couple of things we need to do um this can be our scale Board scale. Uh, we need to be able to work out our number. Yeah. All right. I think you know. I think this is basically it. Uh, we just have to do a bit of maths now. Um, so yeah, we're not even having to do offset rows. You can just set like the min max to be the same. Oh, but then every row is going to be like a grid. So like, if you want to have the same length boards, you're going to need to have a row offset, which means maybe I need to make it extra long. You can extrude and scale the top face. You can, but if you have something which is 20 times longer than it is wide, then you're gonna get very... Oh, but you can do it by a vector. And you can set the vector according to the ratio. Damn, you smart. But then I would only let you have a chamfer, like a single bevel. Um, I think I might just leave them square. At least until we get a bevel node. All right, let's keep going here. Sorry, I know it always takes me so long to like wind up to these things. I feel really dehydrated as well. <clears throat> right, let's carry on. So I need to know my minimum size and my maximum size. That's the first thing. Um, and I want this to be in meters because it's going to be better. So let's just make sure that we've got our correct units. We're going to go size X, size Y. And we're going to make these uh, relative. Well, let's make this length for width and length. And I'll put them in the correct order. So length is going to have a default of <laughs> invent bevel node. Yeah, bevel node with custom profiles would be very nice. Uh, especially if you could do it through like a float curve, you know, like proper, proper custom bevels. Raphael just says, I was chatting with Demeter from Blender Studio and you can make a lip reading talking head that would turn text to talk with Python. Is that true? I didn't realize Python was like, good I thought it was quite basic and like bare bones but I didn't realize you could do so much with it I know it has like the image reading stuff as well doesn't it maybe I should learn Python all right let's set our width to be something sensible let's go with point two that's probably that way or is it maybe balls are a bit wider than that let's go with point two for now that's fine and a length of 1.2. That seems about right. Okay, make sure we're saving before we crash. So these sizes are now our minimax. No, they're not. Um, so wait, the width we can sort out here. There we go. Python has stuff for everything, does it? Uh, this floor, this becomes our y offset as well right now it's in ones so we can multiply it by sorry and i'm jumping around uh, we can multiply this by our width because that's not going to be randomized that's just going to be the width and then 
the is it possible to randomize a seed in geometry nodes using the object index or something so the seed is unique for each object no i have no idea why not it just kind of kept being people kept being like yeah i can see why that's useful and then i get that i get that they're busy i do but I just it would be so useful if it was just added to the object info node All right, um, so that multiply is done. We've got, that's the width sorted. Now we need the length deviation, um, which I'm going to go from zero plus. All right, um, make 50 blend shapes, then pass pronunciation. Oh, gotcha, you, gotcha. You. Um, with sound length and generate keyframes, that's cool. Do you know, there is, because um, that's what they do for VTubers, isn't it? There's a blender add-on for making VTubers with a very convenient face rig and it comes with all of these um uh, it comes with all of the shape keys in fact I was looking at a tweet for it earlier because I think VTuber is like a cool idea not that I have any setup for it they rate posted a link for it and it's very cool it's called face it Um, and yeah, quick and easy facial expressions with Blender. So it literally has like all of the shape keys, I think, built in. Uh, and you just like stick it over the thing. Let me put that in the chat in case anybody is interested. So Matt. I've been really interested in picking up a looking glass portrait after seeing your video, but they're a little pricey. They are, but they're very cool. Um, yeah, they're neat. Um, I really like it. I think it's, I, I don't know, I, I really like it. I think it's a really cool product and I really like having that kind of virtual display. I'm going to do another video on it real soon, actually, for making another thing now that Geometry Nodes is a bit further. Um, but yeah, no, I think they're really cool. Um, sorry, that's not very erudite, but there's just something about having like desk ornament. If you're somebody who likes having pictures of stuff, I would generally say I'm quite minimal, but then I really like, you know, like I have desktop pictures and I have desktop pictures, which are nice because I've got a Cintiq, which permanently basically displays my desktop picture. Um, either that or a calendar, but I've got my, um, it's not on at the moment and it's plugged in but the so i've got my portrait up on the side there and it's just it normally just displays like little motion graphics things and little things that kind of twizzle around so it's not distracting uh, and it is just kind of like having a 3d object it's kind of, yeah it's like having a 3d object but you have as many as you want i think they're nice um Should I? Should you purchase one? How much are they now? Are they three ninety nine or are they two ninety nine? I would. I would probably wait until summer to be honest. Because I reckon the chip shortage is gonna go. I, it's not gonna go away, but it's. Oh, they're three ninety nine now. So. That is quite expensive. They are cool though. Um, oh, I keep saying cool. Uh, yeah, I'd probably wait until summer because I think they're still backlogged on orders, which means if you order one now, you're still going to be waiting. Um, and I think the chip shortage is caused has, is why they've upped the price to three ninety nine. So I think if the chip shortage goes away, because it's just a Raspberry Pi basically inside it. Um, yeah, once the chip shortage goes away. I think the price will probably drop again or maybe wait for a sale. I would definitely get one though. I think $300 is a good price for it. I definitely, I understand where you're coming from though. Like $400 is quite a commitment. Uh, right, let's go back to this length deviation. So this is how I always make my nodes, my random nodes. I have like rather than min max, I go for target and deviation. So let's just join those up like this um, 
Hopefully Bitcoin, Ethereum will crash more. I don't know. People sure hate crypto. <laughs> Games will go outside. Oh, now you're joking. Now I know you're joking. Outside is a scary place. Um, length and deviation. Basically, I just find it easier because I can be like, I want it to be like 1.2 meters in general, but then with some variation. Um, so what we can do is we can find our min max by basically taking or adding the variation from the length. So length add deviation is our max value and the length subtract the deviation is our min value. All right. And what this means is that our, the number that we're dividing by here, the length of a row needs to be at least the length of our bounding box minus, sorry, divided by our minimum value. Um, <laughs> let it drop and then buy in the dip, yeah. Sell high, buy low. So we're going to take a vector math. Let's just subtract these. So max subtract min should give us a distance between them. And then uh, separate x, uh, separate x, y, z, there we go. Oh, because I snatched a couple of GPUs, yeah. It's so dumb though, because uh, NVIDIA were like, oh, we're gonna make our GPUs like uh, mining proof uh, by putting this tiny little piece of software on them that you can easily remove. <laughs> like that just didn't, that didn't help anybody. Uh, all right, so we have our Y dimension, because this is, we're going in this direction, remember, uh, divided by the minimum, the smallest value, this is gonna give us the most number of boards it could be. And then we're gonna, we're gonna basically add, we're gonna multiply this by like one point something, which is gonna be our over, um, the, like the amount over. Uh, and then just because I feel like we might need a buffer. Uh, and then we're going to do float to integer so that we can floor this in a way which is slightly faster than using the math floor because the math floor is still going to output a float. Um, wait, is it faster if you can turn it back into a float? Maybe not. Let's just use a normal floor node. Uh, floor, there we go. Plug this in. Okay, nice. This is uh, not <laughs> not working. <laughs> All right, so where have we gone wrong? I need enough points, that's why. Okay, this isn't working. <laughs> so our points have to be stacked and that's our group index. Okay. Hey, Darren, how's it going? Um, and our width should be... Wait, why am I going the X direction? Have I messed up? Apply rotation and scale. Okay, so it's not rotated. Why is our width going in the Y direction? Our width is setting. There we go. Being foolish. So the width is the uh, the x dimension. Yes, that's correct. But now it's scaling in that one. Right. Okay. Got to make sure you have the correct size for stuff. All right. Uh, length deviation, that's all the same. That's fine. Um, we're going to go big or little. That's fine. We're going to go point 0.2. Uh, we only need as many points as will fit within our x scale. So let's do a divide on here, divided by the number for our width. Uh, and then this can be floored again. 
and this is our number of boards. Do we need to add anything to it? I might like add five or something just so that I know it's bigger than the room. And then we need to multiply our two board sizes. So this should be our, this should be our Y count. And this one should be our X count. When you're working on these kinds of things, just make sure you're using frames. It'll save you a lot of trouble. All right. Now I'm going to re-add this one because I want to make sure that it fits. <laughs> Oops. Um, do we just need to subtract the... Oh, we can just move it by the minimum vector, right? Compare, transform by the minimum size. And there we go. Perfect. All right. Uh, so the bad thing is, the bad, the bad news is that we have one fewer board than I actually want. So uh, when we do this, what I need to do is make sure I'm adding one because that way it just makes sure. Because if we do, if we don't add one, you can see how that's clipping. That's how we want it. Uh, if we don't add one, then you can basically will give you the number of boards that will fit within the space uh, and we want the number of boards that will fit just over the space so now if i rotate this you can see that we should never have the boards smaller than the space cool all right now then When we have exactly the same length rows like this, we want each row to be offset by a random number. Is there an easy way to do this? I think there might be. I think we can probably just add a random value which takes its seed from the group index to our average position. All right, make a bit more space. Uh, if anyone wants to make an add-on for Blender, then what I would really like is in Grasshopper for Rhino, you can just like press a button and then everything, you can like shunt everything, everything in the node tree that is either left or right, you can push to make extra space. And it's really, really useful. With uh, with Noodler, you can like click control and then you've got like a whole branch, which is cool. But if you click control over here, then I'm still missing these nodes, right? So it'd be much more useful if I could just like, be like, okay, everything on this side, I can just push it back. Just, just if you wanted to make an add-on, you know? All right. So I need to just make sure that we have added. Wait, what was I doing? All oh, right, we're going to add a random value to each row. So add. This is going to be an offset. You can see that's moving. Uh, we need a random value node in here where the maximum value should be our minimum maximum length. And we need our seed. No, we need our ID to be per row. So it gives us the same value across the entire row like this. And if I change this to subtract, and then I make sure that I'm adding two boards, then we're still in the space. Nice. There we go, awesome. Yeah, this is just, this is working out. This is almost like I planned it. All right, so that's basically our laying pattern. Um, length deviation, let's change this up a little bit. Okay, that's not good, is it? 
Um, this has gotten really big. Why has that happened? <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, the reason is is because we can technically have boards which are only 10 centimeters long which means the maximum number of boards and noodles musha okay is that a problem I, I it's probably not a problem you're probably never going to be making a space which is so big that uh that is going to cause you problems. Uh, let's go down to like, oops, I was going to say two there. So it's a slight overlap. Um, I'm not sure we even need that multiply. Uh, let's, if, I mean, if this is set to something sensible anyway, like point 0.1 or point 0.2, then you're never going to have those issues. Okay, so uh, what we can do now, I wonder if we should center it on the box, just so it's like really guaranteed to work. Because um, at the moment I've just translated it basically back to the box, but maybe I should translate it God, sorry, that was really bad. Uh, maybe I should translate it to like, so it's centered over. Um, should we just do it with like another bounty box? Man, that was crunchy. Sorry if that came through on the microphone. I've, uh, I gotta stop cracking my neck. I like go through phases of, uh, every few years I'll start cracking my neck and it just gets worse and worse. Cringing at the closeness of some of the joints. Don't worry, if we scale these down, because uh, these are all, I I have also fitted um, floorboards and done stuff like this. I mean, that's just terrible, but uh, we could do this, we could get them to scale per, like, like in the ratio. Um, probably uh, we do need to be able to set like a spacing thing anyway which we'll do we'll do after this is still all basic it's nice uh, let's go into our rotation rotate around the y-axis you can see that is exactly what the floor should look like um, we want to set our rotation. We're going to align. Where are we? Are we just going to... Sorry, I know I'm doing a lot of thinking today. Um, but it's so uncomfortable if you don't, yeah. The, uh, the, you, once you get out of cracking your neck, it becomes... I think it's just a habit, because you get like nitrogen bubbles, don't you, forming? And the more you do it, the more it happens. So the, it, and if you don't do it, it doesn't happen. <laughs> so if you can make yourself stop, I mean, I quit smoking. I'm sure I can quit cracking my neck. It's crazy. You know when people are like, oh, smoking's the hardest thing to quit. I just, I never believed it until I tried. Man, that stuff is addictive. Uh, we're gonna do a random value in our rotation. And we're just going to rotate in the y-axis. Nope, in the x-axis. Have I dipped into physics nodes yet? Are there any? What? Is there a branch for physics nodes? Uh, Blender.org. Download. Builds. I guess the build bot. Um, I mean, I've not seen any physics nodes. I've seen that there's 
Uh, actually, I meant to mention this. Uh, Delay was talking about the things needed for the upcoming hair nodes, which is going to be very exciting. And um, so it's stuff like like the like there's different stuff that you would need for different types of hair. So eyelashes would need things like edit mode. They don't need to collide with anything. Um, and they don't like they don't really need physics, right? But they can they need to be able to grow based on the surface normal. Eyebrows don't need any clumping, um, whereas eyelashes do. Uh, but eyebrows probably don't need any cutting. So beard, moustache and hair, they're going to need physics and cutting and grooming. Uh, so there's a lot of stuff which is going to be really interesting. And I'm, I'm interested to know how they did, uh, how they're going to do... I've completely lost the word. Um, how they're going to do like edit mode live. Because if you've got a thousand hairs generated procedurally, you've got to freeze it so that you can groom it, right? So there's going to have to be all of the cache stuff come in. And um, yeah, so all of like the physics is going to need cache. All of the grooming is going to need cache. So for a start, we're going to get cache nodes. We're going to get, uh, yeah, there's just going to be a bunch of stuff, which is really cool. So I'm really excited for that because as well, like I'm not interested in doing hair for characters, but I am interested in using the tools for grooming hair in stuff which is not hair. Because I think that's going to be a really interesting workflow, like being able to groom architectural shapes or something like that. I think that's just going to be really interesting. Uh, Darren, you quit smoking 20 years ago and there are still times you'd like to have a cigarette. It's so weird how it just never leaves. It's so strange. But you know as well, you know if you had one, it would be like, oh, that tasted gross and it made me feel a bit grim. But then it's still just like, oh, but maybe, maybe I could have a cigarette. Okay, uh, we need to have a tiny bit of rotation in this direction, like 0.05 at most, and minus 0.05 in the other one. I mean, that's like really the most you would have. Stick a scale on here. Let's add a something mix RGB with a group input and this factor we can use for our randomized rotation. I don't know with hair as well, like how are they going to do children? Because you can't have all of surely you need to have a system for interpolated and simple children, at least interpolated. But then that's going to be great because if we can do interpolated children, then doing stuff like grass and foliage becomes so much lighter because you're no longer having to generate 100 million polygons or like whatever. You can just generate like 10% of that and have everything else computed based on that. Uh, this is our randomize, random rotation. Something like that. All right. Um, <laughs> Jaber. Uh, let's let me just put this in a frame. I'll we'll keep it all segregated for now. Uh, random rotation. What else do we need? So the input's the floor, which is fine. Um, we've got offset and rows, which is fine. We've got, oh, is that too small? No, that's right, actually. Um, yeah, so I was gonna just center it and then we were gonna just do the crop and that'll be fine. Um, so we've got, our, I don't need to use this translation anymore. We'll just put that aside. So I need basically a bounding box, geometry bounding box. which needs to actually have a realize instances. There we go. So one whole bounding box. Uh, I need to know the difference in the central positions. You wish you could quit. It's, um, it's hard to quit, but it is worth it. It is worth it. 
Yeah, I agree. Cold turkey. Cold turkey, but also it's about your social situation. Like, if you are smoking and you are around friends who smoke, it's so hard to just be like, oh, I'm just going to stop. But if you are smoking and you're able to distance yourself from other people who smoke, then that's going to be, it's just going to be so much better for you. Um, <coughs> sorry, excuse me. How do I make this group node that is like a one-off group node? Um, how do you make it have, I need it to have the geometry. Do I just do, no. Do I grab, no. I hate these. These little, um, like the tiny little one-off nodes. I think that was a terrible, I'm sorry if there are devs listening, but I think that was a terrible design decision much better to have one like high utility node in my opinion and then you can just add it and it does loads of stuff line shaders where you have like the object uh texture texture info node um is that what i mean texture coordinate node uh, and it's got like all of the different sockets that's what you want uh, let's now find the distance, subtract, and we can just put this into the translation, here we go. And I need some geometry. Alright, uh, maybe it goes that way. Control J, put this in here as well. Uh, maybe not. This is our center all, or center. Uh, F2. It made it as well, like with with uh, quitting smoking. I found it much. It, it made it really difficult for me to go to parties or go to bars and things, because I found like a lot of my way of coping with those. So I'm not like I don't know. Maybe this is quite obvious, but I'm not like a super social person. So like a lot of my way of dealing with those situations where you're around a lot of people is to go into the beer garden and have a cigarette, and suddenly it's like oh I don't have that excuse. So it's. I don't know, it just, if I found it made it really difficult to socialise when I, especially because I'd had that for like, for years, I don't know, I was smoking, I think I started smoking when I was like 17, and then I was smoking for like, so like all of my like social, like highly social years were, I was using that as a, as a way to kind of socialise, I guess. Um, and it makes your hand smell so bad. <laughs> I love that like accountability like uh, Julia just said that her mum had been smoking for 35 years and then bought the nicotine stickers and was like oh I spent so much money on those I better stop and it's like yeah if you can find a way to hold yourself accountable even if it's just like posting it on social media being like everybody make sure I don't smoke alright these are looking pretty good it's gonna work as I rotate this looking good now i would like to do a rotation um let me just frame this so i don't lose it this is my board input and then i want to do a rotation so i need to rotate before and after um so that our bounding box works yeah i think that's right so I can come in here, add a transform node. I think if I do this rotation, you can see that's getting bigger and then smaller. Um, accountability via social media. Accountability via social media is how I learned to draw because I would like commit to doing daily drawings or whatever it was. And then it's like, I, even if nobody actually cares, and I think like the older I've got, the more I've realized that nobody cares. But certainly when I was younger, it was like, oh, actually, you know, I said that I wanted to do this, so I'm going to have to do it now. All right. Uh, 
I want to find a degrees angle. Here we go. And then we're going to plug this into the Z of a combined XYZ. And this goes into our rotation. Cool. So this is our pre-rotation. And I'm going to have to do a post-rotation as well. So control, control shift D. Dean, just come to the next stream and uh, we will bully you if you haven't stopped. There you go, that's your accountability. Shame, it's a powerful thing. All right, let's put this, um, actually I don't need this one, I can just plug it into the rotation. And this one needs to go negative. So, uh, Let's go multiply by minus one. Oh, is this not working? Damn, that's not perfect anyway. Uh, oh wait, maybe it just needs to be in a different transform. Maybe it's one of these like the order of operations things. It certainly seems to be. Maybe it needs to go before the other transform. Ah, see you later, Raphael. Wait, is it Raphael last time who got the like the baked goods from his wife? Is I feel like that was the thing. <laughs> Funny. Um, oh yeah, this isn't working at all now. Come on, um, because we're starting at zero. Yeah, just, just this one pack this one time. Or when it's a friend and they're just like, they're rolling. I don't, I, I know like pre-rolled is more popular in America, is that right? Uh, but like at least in the UK, everybody smokes rollies. And then somebody will be rolling and it's like, oh, I'll just bum a cig. And then, and then that's it again. You're like, oh, that was quite nice. And maybe we'll buy a pack. Anyway, moral of the story is don't start smoking. <laughs> the baked good saga. Um, okay, so this should work. No, oh, it's not working. All right. It must be the order I'm doing things in. Maybe I need to center it. And then, or maybe... Yeah, I wonder if that's it. Or maybe that shouldn't, that, wait, no, that, okay. Oh my God, my brain is fried. What am I doing? So we've gone through, we've rotated our shape and then we've found the bounding box for it. So then we've made all of the boards which fit into this bounding box, right? Yes, that's correct. So then all we need to do is we need to make sure that the bounding box Oh. No, yeah, no, that's right. And then we just need to rotate it back. Why is this being so fiddly? Just tuned in with a coffee. Oh, lucky. I'm guessing it's to do with the center of rotation. What a pain, what a pain. All right, so uh, in this case, Let's maybe use a set position node. No, a because they they should all be instances. Rotate instances here. The pivot point should be the middle here. Oh God, that's worse. <laughs> um, Why is that, that pivot point is not worked at all? 0.5, maybe I should use this pivot point. That's still also bad. 
That's worse. Or is it? Oh wait, that's going around zero zero. Thanks, no worries, man. Wait, where does this not work? Wait, does this now work? <laughs> How has this suddenly started working? I'm so confused. Right, let's mute that. So we can do it with a transform node, right? Because we're doing this around the transform point of zero, not in the local space, we're doing it just generally. So that should be fine. How did I manage to break it before? That's pretty close, actually. Okay, weird. All right, we've got it working, kind of, maybe. I'll take it. All right, this one is post rotation. Okay, good stuff. So that's how I'm getting my angle boards. If I want these at 45 degrees, we can just rotate and rotate and rotate. Um, cool, so now what we need to do... Wait, so can this definitely not just work through one? Because I'd much prefer... Yeah, definitely not. I guess it's the order of operations then. I just basically messed up. Um, because the transform nodes do uh, translation, rotation and scale in a weird order. I'm not actually sure which order, but apparently going around zero is fine for this. So that's that's fine. I will have to check. I mean, it seems to be working even when I've moved it. And we'll back from move the whole object. It still seems to be working. Oh wait, right, I'll take it. I'll take it. Uh, let's go something like. This. So we have a bit of a landing. Alt G. Uh, let's go scale Z zero. And I'll just bring this back to the middle. Awesome. Cool. So now what we can do is we can take our input geometry with an extrude node. So I will not be able to release these flooring meshes, these are uh, you know, these flooring generators until we get 3.1 released. But that's fine. Um, I should probably also move it down a little bit. Oh, and it's empty, of course it is. So not individual. Might be fine for the Boolean still, but we will see. Um, I'm going to move this down. Just with a vector. Okay, I guess that's not what I wanted. Uh, I'll just use a transform node then. So we're going to go down by 0.1. There we go. Uh, Control J is for node frame creation. Control J, like join, join in a frame. And then we have our floorboards, we have our extrude mesh. We can now add a Boolean, the cursed node. It should be under mesh. Mesh Boolean. can't take instances, so let's realize those. And um, we need to find the intersections. Okay, I reckon that's, I reckon that's worked. And now we can extrude this mesh down to give us our solidify. That point oh two should be fine. And we want to go negative. Oh, but then we've, it doesn't really solidify into set geometry nodes. Hopefully we'll get a solidify node. We need to just flip our, I'll show you why. Let me turn on the face orientation here. Um, God, that's her horrendous. So, all right, uh, let's go up instead, 0 0.02, but we also need to move it down by 0 0.02, minus 0 0.02, terrible. Um, 
Hey Schmidt, how's it going? <laughs> Derpa, no worries. Because uh, I'm doing a few different patterns today. We've only been going like not even two hours. So right now we're just doing like a standard floorboard, like straight floorboards. Um, I need to add a seed to my input. And then once we've done these, we're going to do herringbone, which is fun. And then we can also do, we can see if we can get to Chevron and Versailles. All right. Uh, so all of this only needs to happen if we don't have, do you know what? This doesn't, we don't need to do this at all. Rather than using a grid, I can just use a cube. Oh, but then what about the scaling? The, uh, uh, are the artifacts due to normals behind normals? So the, do you mean why it's all red? It's because of the, so the extrude doesn't leave faces. It just pulls them. So if you have like a face and you extrude it, you end up with this shape rather than what general blender would normally do which would be to create a closed off shape which included your original face um i would like to do this with planes if possible because because of the uvs let's see if we've got uvs actually let's get to the shader editor let's make sure we're applying material so material Going to be assigning a new one, which is going to be just boards. And there we go. And ah, oh, do you know? I reckon we've probably lost all of our attributes. We might be able to capture them. Wait, let's actually see if we have. So material preview. Let's find our UV map. Okay. Definitely not generic UV map. Let's try UV map. Let's try UV. Wait, do we have a, where's the spreadsheet? Should be on the faces. Uh, or is it face corners? Capital, so capital UV map should be there. but it's all zeros. However, UV underscore map still has all of our UV maps. How cool is that? Um, does anyone know how arcane style was made? Are there 2D background styles possible? Oh, are there part 2D background styles possible in Blender real time? Yes, absolutely. They're hand painted textures, just they're hand painted textures and very simple modeling. That's kind of all there is to it, actually. If you go on uh, if you go on ArtStation, there's loads of people. I mean, there's loads of people who were actually on the development team for that film, posting their things. And then obviously there's a lot of art, fan art of it. Uh, there was some really cool grease pencil stuff from last year, where somebody made like a really neat shop front with grease pencil. Um, yeah. Let me show you something actually. I sent this to Haku. Basically, somebody with Unity has made this insane graphic style. It's so beautiful. Nick Carver, my god. Look at this. This is 3D. It's just like, it's so crazy that, because it just blows my mind. Like there's so much processing going on based on the depth and you can do that with 3D stuff. And like, look at the smoke. Look at just all of these lines and the way the lines miss edges and everything's just a little bit wonky. It's just amazing. Like the style is so good. And obviously this is all um, 
let me send this into the chat. This is all in Unity, but it's so it's all real time and it's like animated and it's moving. Let me see if I can find the video. This guy's just incredible. Go and follow Nick Carver. Uh, just his work is so freaking cool. I love it. And it's like stop motion as well. Let me kind of make it bigger. No. But yeah, very cool. Um, I love it. I kind of love like the 12 FPS thing as well. It's just like really owning the hand-drawn French vibes. Amazing. Just so cool. Add proportional editing to distort. I think he's got multiple layers of... I, I, I know nothing about how he's built it, but like if I was doing it, I would have... I think probably two passes. I'd have like um, a like a sort of edge detection layer that was overlaid on top of the on top of the render, uh, and then you could distort that, and that would give you your edges, and it would allow your edges to miss stuff. But I don't know how he's done it, unless he's literally gone in and drawn all of the the lines, which he may well have done on the textures. So he might just have like another texture layer, just like black and white, where he's drawn all the lines. Um, because that would make it look hand drawn, <laughs> but it's so cool. I love it. Anyway, so we have a UV map, which is great news because it means we can actually correct our UV map. Let me just put a Voronoi texture on it. Because the important thing is that the UV map. Well, we want two things. We want a random seed per board. And we want to correct the dimensions so that you can just use a like a timber texture, a tileable timber texture, and they won't all be stretched on different boards. Um, and then we need to still work out how to actually make it so that you can plug in a custom mesh for your boards, which I think should not be too bad, but it's just something to think about. All right. Um, so our inputs, so we, we know what all of our scales are going to be. Can I just use this to scale our UV? I'm a little bit worried that it's going to make our, our tool kind of unusable because it's like you have a section for generated boards and then you're going to have a separate section for, um, ouch, for, uh, or you're just not going to use them for your custom boards. Um, but we will see, we will see. So I need to make sure I'm inputting a vector, which is going to be my UV map. So that'll just be saying capital, but I'm going to, I know it's not. So UV underscore map, because it, it doesn't exist on the geometry because it's from the generated geometry. There should at some point be some cohesion once we've worked out 2D vectors or vectors. I saw another thing actually which confused me. When I was reading one of the commit reports and uh, they were saying that a vector should not be a bag of float values, which is strange to me because that's how I think of vectors. It's just three float values in different channels. And that's why they're very powerful because X, Y, Z vector is the same as an RGB vector. And you just use, you can use them interchangeably and you can use the sockets interchangeably. So I've just always found it really strange that they're differentiated. And, but then for this bug, not bug report, sorry, a, a patch report, uh, to be specifically like, okay, we need to make sure that we're not just making vectors, like a bag of floats, which seems weird. Cause then it surely it would be really easy for you to add like vector, like two vec for your UV map, which just has a U and a V or an X and a Y. And then you can also do your 4vex for your like wxyz, which can be used for RGBA or CMYB, CMYK, or in whatever else like the compositor nodes are. Anyway, if anybody knows how vectors, why you would differentiate between like RGB and XYZ vectors when you're not even clipping or clamping them, 
seems like a strange, strange thing to do. All right, if I multiply these by our scale and then we output this, does that help anyone? Can I even write it to this channel? Me? What do you know? So if we have like even more length deviation, sometimes it's glitching and it is glitching because of edge intersections with our Boolean cutter. This is why no one likes Booleans. Okay, we're getting some real bad stretching, so that's bad. Do we need to divide it? Oh no, that's worse. Hmm. So I need to, oh yeah, I need to capture. I need to capture the scale. And then when it's realized, it'll work. So attribute, capture attribute, vector, instance for the scale. And then use this one instead. No, it's still bad. Interesting. <laughs> uh, do I need to flip it? No, it should just work, right? I should just divide, I should just divide by the thing. I don't think I need to flip my order, do I? That would be weird that you can, this is like watching a person who doesn't know how maths works, trying to problem solve maths. I literally just try stuff. That strangely actually looks kind of better. And now it's worse again. Um, <laughs> tell that to Josh Granville. Alex, converting RGB to a grayscale flow is not the same as averaging a 3D vector to do the same conversion. Is that true for geometry nodes? Is that even true for shaders? Wait, let me try. So we've got a vector combined XYZ. Let's set all of these to be different values. Let's go one, two, three. And let's uh, control shift D, control shift S, color, combine RGB, one, two, three. Um, all right, math node, uh, math viewer. Oh, yeah, you're right. So the conversion from, oh, maybe I did know this a long time ago. The convert, yeah, it's a luminance conversion. Um, yeah, so the only difference is going from blue to gray, but going from yellow, like if I pass this through a vector math node adding zero, then it behaves as a vector. Like there's no conversions between yellow and blue. Hey Astrid, how's it going? Yeah, the 3D vector to float is just a third. Oh, sorry, it's, it's just the average. Um, for a while, it was the length, but I think that was like right at the start of geometry nodes. Um, yeah, Alex, no, you're right for geometry nodes as well. I just checked that and that worked the same, so. Uh, right. Okay, so I don't think the XYZ is helping me. so useful if we had so on the roadmap for 3.2 I think um, is named attribute nodes so we should finally be able to put a named attribute inside the node tree which is going to be really useful because it finally means that our node trees are shareable which is ironic because they didn't add it because it was 
about making it more shareable which I kind of I kind of understand but I think it was like a miss I think it was a bit of a miss because loads of stuff like this I don't want to give this tool to people and be like oh yeah but you need to remember to use this random UV generated space like if, if I'm making a set of tools a suite of tools I want them to be able to talk to each other with attributes that I've generated um, so they need to be built into the node graph rather than being on the modifier if he says loop I'm trying to avoid things which need loops today that was like my goal when I sat down I was like oh I'm gonna I'm gonna come up with an idea which doesn't require any loops all right um I don't understand why this isn't working though on the scale like if I scale something down by a half and I also double the size of the UV then it should have the effect of doing nothing so if my scale is doing one thing then I should just be able to divide it up in here and that's not helping anything oh do you know what I reckon so for the edges the boolean has ruined it I still don't understand why the middle ones aren't working So, <laughs> Eli, <laughs> I, just, I just like how phases are being really angsty in these streams. Just like, oh, why won't they add all these tools I need? Uh, let me just, I'm just going to get rid of these because I think they add, just confuses things. And generally speaking, if I add the timber textures that I used on the original herringbone tutorial, Then, no tree images. I can just put these in like this, like this. With most floorboards, you're not going to have a crazy amount of compression, right? So the length deviation might be like 0.3 at the most. So in that case, these are kind of fine. They're fine. Uh, what we do need, oh no. What we do need is for our boolean to not break. Okay. Just find a value that works. Does texture painting only apply to backgrounds? Or does it apply to the characters? Uh, yes, it applies to everything. Everything is hand painted. There is some procedural animation and procedural texturing. But basically all of the characters are hand painted and all of your hero assets are hand painted like the, you know, like barrels, uh, like the chairs, uh, you know, um, like Silco's chair and desk, that's all going to be hand painted. There's going to be some texture work. It'll be, done, it'll be done in Substance Painter, so it won't be like a chore. It'll be fairly straightforward, but... Yeah, all of that stuff. If you want a hand painted style, oh, there's a YouTuber who does Cinema 4D stuff. What was his name? He's like a Dutch guy, or maybe Austrian. Um, he's got some process videos. Yeah, Marco Bucci did a video from of the arcane characters. Oh, did he do a background one as well? I love Marco's work and I'm really glad that he's getting into geometry nodes or oh, not geometry nodes sorry he's getting into blender a bit more um let's find this person so cinema 4d hand painted I hope this comes up yeah, Olaf Storm is his name. Um, I will just share this with you. So if you're interested, Poi, have a look at that video as well. That's like, it's not the same style, but it's probably more or less the same process. Like how he uses procedural texturing techniques to manipulate hand-painted textures. Um, what they would have done in Arcane as well is they would have an additional layer of being like this specific bit needs to be like we want to have these paint strokes over it 
Okay. Next thing, or the last thing I need here, is a random float per. Um, per board. So I can just change this to float, change this to random number. It's just between zero and one, that's fine. And then I can plug this into my output node. Can just be called random board. There we go, let's call this one rand, that's fine. Go back into our shader. I don't like to do too much with random stuff in the shader if I've done random stuff in geometry nodes because it does not seem to play nice. Like if I come in here and I grab rand, right, you can see we've got a random, oh god, the boolean. Boolean makes it very challenging, doesn't it? I think we need to transfer it to the post Boolean boards as well. Maybe we can just capture it after, but I don't think we can. If I do this, no, because they're not Okay, let's just transfer it then. So transfer attribute, which comes from our, from, so the geometry is the last one. And the nearest face interpolate should be fine. And the attribute should be this one. And then this can just transfer out. That's not working. Bother. Um, okay, nearest face does work. All right, we'll go with that then. Um, let's see if this works. So in theory, what's that seed? So the seed, oh, this is going to be a problem. So, all right. Uh, can you use the board's value as a texture offset so the boards don't have the same setting? Yes. Yes, I can, because my images node is actually three different wood textures. These are all um, tileable wood textures. And we've got this so that our location should be, well, scale come on do better Aaron. so that our location should be basically on a waste on a white noise texture now the problem is with geometry nodes and random values and then using these with white noise in shader is you get this horrible effect nobody has um explained why this happens it's just it's so broken so you can't use white noise with these random values, which is annoying, but uh, it shouldn't be a problem. Shouldn't be a problem. As long as you're not using white noise textures. <laughs> so uh, instead of using these, I can just plug the, I don't need that one and I don't need this one it's just got up to a high number, that's fine. So these random values can just go into my seed now. And if we change our seed value, this does nothing. I love it when a plan works. Why isn't this doing anything? Because it was reading a random value. So why is the seed not changing it? Oh, I'm stupid. It's because I plugged it into the alpha instead. There we go. So now we have random offset per board. Um, can I get the random scale per board? I mean, it wasn't working a minute ago. But maybe if we do it in the shader, it'll work. So let's try capturing this attribute. 
vector, plug this in, and then we will transfer just the same as we did over here by vector by nearest face and this one plugs out so this one's going to be uh, board scale oh i wonder if no it shouldn't have made a difference i was going to say i wonder if it's because it's all rotated but i don't think it should have changed anything um call that one sk scl scale I should be fine. So now if I multiply, I mean it does look, it looks fine doesn't it now? This is literally the exact same thing that we did in Geometry notes, but this time it seems to be working. Apologies for the flickering. Yeah, look, even our small boards are just like, yeah, I'm totally fine. I'm a piece of wood. So I have no idea why that didn't work before, but we do now have different bits of wood. So it looks like we do need to have the at least these two for the random board size, uh, sorry, random board value and the board scale need to be output attributes, which is fine. Now we've got some dead boards. Is that a problem? So we should have a UV map for each one. <clears throat> but apparently our attributes. <coughs> Excuse me, my goodness. Um, here we got just like a few boards which are missing our attributes because perhaps they're in, oh yeah, definitely not edge. Um, Definitely not instance. Weird. Well, I guess I'll take a win when it comes like this. <laughs> right, let's add our seed and then we can just play with some random manual input boards. <coughs> Sorry. Oh, just realized I've got a full bottle of water next to me. That's probably why. Okay, so what we can do now is we can just plug in a seed to every single one of our random values. If I can find them. So I don't need this multiply, which is good. And we have a seed here, which I will just make sure this is set to zero. Oh, we've got two seeds here actually. So seed and, oops, seed. It's fine for them to be the same. Um, <laughs> do I have a specific vision? Uh, all I'm doing in this session is making tools for making flooring. Um, that's the idea anyway. Group input seed, there we go, that's what we want. Uh, seed and seed. I wish I could color all of my group inputs like automatically rather than having to come in and be like, okay, let's pick a color. <laughs> it's just a, an, like a wood texture that I've had for, for years. And it's like my go-to one because they're really good normal maps and roughness maps. Um, all right, so now we get into something which is actually a little bit trickier because we want this to be an optional thing. Like 
if you don't plug in your own boards, we won't add any boards. But, oh wait, no, if you don't plug in boards, you will generate boards. But if you do plug in boards, then it will ignore everywhere it wants to generate the boards. Can we make it manually scale them as well, or automatically scale them? Okay, let's go for an input, collection info, collection, separate and reset, just so that they're centered, that's fine. And um, I basically wanna say, if, this, if there is any geometry in here, so we can grab our new attribute to main size, we can say if there are any instances in here, so if this does not equal, or if it does equal, actually it doesn't matter in this case. Um, so integer equals zero. This is now just gonna plug into a bunch of switches. So collection. So, so if it if it equals if it does not equal zero, then this will output a true, and we can change this to pick instance, which will then mean that we can plug in our geometry from our collection. So let's plug in a switch on here. Geometry false true is our collection. That can also go into this switch. If we're using our own boards. Then, we, what do we want to do? Transform's good, transform's good. Realize is good, Boolean is good. We do not want to set the material. Um, I wonder if I can just plug this onto the, uh, or maybe I do want to set the material. But I think we're going to lose our UV maps once we've done our instancing. Is that how it works? Maybe I, um, hmm. Are we going to lose the UV map because of the Boolean? I hate booleans, they're so bad. But I don't think they're avoidable. All right, let's just see how this works. So if I had a collection, new collection boards, uh, let's make our board collection at the top. Here we go, boards. Uh, and in this collection, we have a few floorboards. And in fact, let's make sure this is extra difficult. Because we will make them a bit high poly. <laughs> and drink. Oh, Disco, thank you. I um, I need to make some more tutorials. I'm got, I need to do one on Scatter 5. I've actually, I've got a plan for Scatter 5 because I've been working on a bit of a scene. Um, do I have it open? Uh, which is this little cabin. So it doesn't render particularly fast already. I need some more stuff for it. I need more trees. I need more like things going on basically. And then we're going to use scatter five because um, that's like the new scatter thing. 
to basically instance a bunch of Grasswold products, uh, Grasswold um, assets from the new Island Read asset back. So, um, yeah, but oh, I was looking at those trees, they're botanic trees, and botanic trees are really good from a distance, and they don't look good there. Like, the texture quality is not excellent. And also, I can see a seam, like, right in my field of view. So I think I'm going to have to remake the trunks. Um, and all of these textures as well, they're just placeholders. Uh, the floor is going to be largely covered anyway with, like, pine needles. So that should be fine. But yeah, I just want to have, like, a bit more complexity. It just it feels a bit basic at the moment. So I need to do more and more texture blending, which I think will come with more, like, stuff. Like, the real world is extremely densely populated so i mean like with with stuff <laughs> is this for the new blender slash screen if you're not making it for the new blender slash screen why bother now the scene's actually quite simple um and it's quite small and oh that's some bad texture stretching uh let me just fix that there we go supporting loops for your textures might do that on both actually Uh, but yeah, it's very simple. It's just like a little woodland thing going on. A few pine trees. Um, is it an, is it allowed to ask annoying questions? There's no such thing as an annoying question. Um, anyway, so yeah, this is going to be hopefully this week for a scatter tutorial. And um, I also need to do the Sense Labs sponsorship video. Shout out to Sense Labs for sending me. They're pretty nifty little graphics tablet, which I'm using a lot, actually, way more than I thought. Um, but I think I'm just going to do like a general, like, as a 3D artist, what should you use? Like mouse or trackball or tablet or or Cintiq, like display tablet. Because um, I have all of those things and I've used them a lot. Um, and I'm like, I'm pretty interested in... Let me just close this. I'm pretty interested in like ergonomics, not from a academic point of view, but just from like a, so that my body doesn't break kind of position. Um, so yeah, I have some opinions basically about what people should be using, but ultimately it comes down to do whatever you want. If, like, if you're somebody who sits on the couch a lot, on a laptop, then don't get a mouse because you, you're not going to have anywhere to put it. And if you're like, oh, well, I'll just get a mouse and I'll put it on a like a coaster or, or a book or something. It's like, well, why don't you just get a trackball? Because a trackball gives you all of like the, it's not perfect, but it gives you like a lot of the utility of moving a mouse around. Um, but it's also super ergonomic. <laughs> Riaz, no worries. If we start getting bots, then uh, I guess it's Riaz is actually the bot. You're an expo. Oh, are you the design world? The world design expo is that the one? Uh, let's go into sculpt mode. I'm just gonna do this really badly. Tool remesh voxel size 0.03 or something. Control R. 3D Connections has a space mouse. Do, wait, do you have a space mouse? The glove is totally a medium size. Oh, I, the glove is so annoying. I have big hands. Um, so the glove is basically way too small. And then the glove which I actually use is this cheap one that I cut the fingers off so that it fitted because it's impossible to find gloves, like tablet gloves, which are big enough. Just ridiculous. Yeah, trackballs are good. I like trackballs. I like switching between my trackball and my mouse. And then I really, I do like Wacoms and like uh, the Sense Labs. But I just, uh, it's just having the pen, you know, like sometimes you want to just quickly write something and you don't want to have a pen in your hand. So you need someone to put it. 
And as good as the um, the little pencil case they send is, it's quite difficult to get stuff in and out of it. You have an MX Anywhere 3. Oh, is this just like a normal mouse? But a little. I need bigger mice. This is my problem, is people, I was looking at the reviews from the MX3 and people were saying it's a big mouse and it is so small. It's tiny, this thing is tiny. Uh, the Logitech MX Master 3 is really good. I really like it, but you just have to remember, like if I have this in a palm grip, which is like when you have your hand, like when you have it in your hand, basically, my hand just like completely shoots off the end. And as much as I like my, whoop, just reach around the back of my monitor to grab this. It's been a few days since I've used my, um, there we go, my trackball. It's sort of vanished. This one is very dusty. This one is so much bigger, the, the trackball. And it's a really good mouse as well. It's really comfortable. And it actually almost fits my hand. Like this is a, I would say this is like a really large mouse, but I, my fingers still go over. Um, so I think I need a 3D printer and I need to print my own mouse. What I would really like is a trackball, which is not a trackball, but is a capacitive touch thing like the, the steam remotes. That would be my goal. And yeah, I don't use all of the like macro buttons cause I'm too lazy to set them up. So I don't mind not having macro buttons, but I would really like a trackball that was like, capacitive cause it's just really unhide. I just, I find them really unhygienic, the, capacity, the the rolling ones. Anybody who remembers mice from like the 90s when you had to pop out the optical ball? Crazy. Disco. I was wondering if it's possible with 3.0 to slide a point along a curve. I'd like to make super flexible brick wall with a vertical curve and a horizontal curve that stacks bricks. But the odd brick layers need to be offset and I'd like to con control by how much. Um, well, uh, yeah, you can do that. You just need the maths to do the, th to do the thing. <laughs> um, the, Oh, you got the Corsair M65. Let me look at that. I used to have a really big mouse as well. Uh, I can't remember. It wasn't even that expensive. It was like the Fire Glider or something. Yeah, so for doing the offset on the bricks, you just have to have a, basically like an index for your alternating row. Um, so every odd layer or whatever, if you if you just do like modulo by two of your if you, if you have an index, it's like zero, one, two, three, four, whatever. And then you modulo by two, then you're going to get every alternate row. And then you can just basically add to whichever axis you're sliding in. Or if you're doing it along curves, then you can just, um, you can just push it along the curve. In fact, if you have my toolkit, you will see there is a node. Oh my God, now I'm stuck in this mode. Um, There is the generator brick spline. And in this one, you can actually find at some point, some maths on how to get stuff to slide along the curve, because that's what this one does. Now if I view the output from it, oh, there's no curve. Uh, but you get the idea. Basically, I've been able to slide stuff along, uh, along there. <laughs> the most creative ways to justify the purchase of a 3D printer. If I had the space for a 3D printer, I would absolutely get one. Darren, so yours, you were saying the M65. I'm not in the market for a new mouse, but I do just, I wish I could build an extension for this one because like when I'm holding it to put my fingers on the end of the, um, yeah, to put the tips of my fingers on the button so I can like, you know, click the buttons. There's like, there is 
if I find out where the camera is, there we go. There's like a centimeter or two centimeters or something of gap in my hand. In fact, maybe even an inch in the palm of my hand behind the mouse. It's so frustrating. But the thing is, I need to slide along the tangent of a curve. Interesting. All right, I'll get back to my floorboard in just a minute. Let me let me have a look at this. So, in fact, let me open a spare blender. So, if you've got a, uh, a bezier and we're doing our work on this. Uh, Oh, I think maybe, hey Leo, how's it going? Um, so if you're instancing on points, a cube or whatever, it's gonna be nice and small. We need to resample our curve. There we go, and we need to rotate this to, <laughs> no worries. Oh, do you know what, actually, there might be uh, an, a different way, an easier way. Um, a basic 3D printer, printer isn't that large. You must have a real lack of space. I have a real, um, I like space. That's the thing, I don't like clutter. I refuse to not have enough space to be able to lie on the floor. Like if I if I can't lie on the floor, how, what am I supposed to do with my days? Like you need, you've got to have space. You've got to have space for like thinking. Um, but yeah, you can get really small ones like a form labs though. You know, like the orange ones, the orange top ones, they really don't take up much space. I, I have enough space for a form labs one, but it's just, I know if I got it, I would do like three prints and then I would never use it again. And that is the only reason I've not bought one. I would really like a clay printer though. Have you seen like ceramics printing clay? Um, all right, so I'm trying, to, I'm trying to remember how this works. There's a guy who does a, who has a tutorial on how to make stuff move in definite, like permanent, wait, what am I saying? To, it moves infinitely along a curve. And he was using the ID, I think. So set ID. Maybe that's not right. Uh, he was using a random value. To do something. Man, I can't remember what it was now. Let me find that video and I'll just share the link with you because then you can watch it and he does a really good job of explaining it. Um, so this is uh, junk nodes. Curve leaves. Yeah, infinite object flow along a curve, there you go. Uh, disco, if you're still here. Uh, wait, maybe I can just tag him. There we go, that link is potentially helpful. Because he uses the ID to move stuff, which is a really interesting way of doing it, because it means that you're never actually moving stuff. Um, which is just a bit weird, uh, but it works. All right, let's grab this and I want to do, I don't really want to sculpt it. I just want to basically make it not look rectangle so that we can get a sense of what it's doing. Um, Max Edge, yeah. Yeah, I love Max Edge, he's so funny. And he's got such a nice editing style as well. It's just like, it's so weird. Uh, let me duplicate these. I want two of them. I want them to be different sizes. And I also want them to look 
different. Let's just smooth all this out. Okay, well, it definitely looks different. So first challenge is, can we make it scale them? I am assuming not. I'd be surprised if we can get a normalized scale on here. But it would be cool. Um, oh boy. So we're not even making too many boards, but because of that boolean, it's really not thrilled, is it? That boolean is such a terrible node. I'm sure there must be faster ways of of um, uh, of doing cuts and things that don't involve booleans. Like even if it was like a 2D crop. Oh my goodness, what is going on? Um, yeah, like we need 2D crops. That's such a useful node for making almost everything, and it's so much. It should be anyway. So much faster. Wait, we're just gonna we're gonna scooch back a little bit here. Come on. So can we scale these to fit? Uh, let's do a bounding box. This is so, this is stupid because it's still computing the rest of the node tree, even though there's no, oh, it's because of these, isn't it? The output attributes make everything so slow. If I mute those, is that going to be, there we go. That's got rid of everything. Cool. So we have two bounding boxes, which is good, a good sign. And if we use our scale instances, Can we do this based on each one of these? Um, if I had to write the software to do Boolean operations on geometric meshes, I'd cry and get someone else to do it. <laughs> They're just so bad. Oh my God. It's so weird that Booleans are so useless. And there's, so there's a guy who does a Spurchock add-on, an add-on for an add-on called Spurchock, and his add-on is called Topologic. And it's about creating um, an understanding of space intersections within buildings. And um, I watched a Twitter video that he released where he was showing the, uh, he's, he's using a, like a custom Boolean node, which is completely Python in Blender, so it's single-threaded. And it's doing such fast booleans. I know it's not a complex scene, but it's so much faster. Um, isn't sculpting math-wise force application with preset parameters? <laughs> Smoke simulations are so slow. All simulation is just atrocious. You need such a fast computer. If you're trying to do smoke sims on a MacBook, speed. Yeah, booleans in Blender. It's crazy, it's like every time I use them it's like, like how is this just, how is this getting confused over such a small thing? Uh, oh wait, let me, let me get back to this. Um, I need to work out the size of these and then we can just scale them appropriately. Come on. One thing I hate about Blender as well, and I hate this because I use nodes a lot. Look where I have to join this to. Oh, actually, now I've zoomed in, it's quite good. Um, if I was zoomed out, oh, as soon as I want to show you, it's like, it's not doing it. Um, normally I have to like connect so far over. Let's see if I can find another node that does it. Yeah, this, like as soon as you actually come, you have to come like next to it. 
That one seems to be working alright as well, actually. The next time it does it, I'll point it out. It's so frustrating that you have to be like so far away from the socket. Right, so we're subtracting these, that's the size. We can now split this. Wait, do I need to just divide? Divide by one and then scale this. Yeah, that did not work, did it? Ugh, these bounding boxes are so stupid. <sighs> if only we had loops, eh? If only we had loops. Just need a way to loop through every single different object and output the bounding box sizes so I could use them. Because this is just thinking that these two bounding boxes, which we can see quite clearly, have a minimum and maximum size of zero, which means we cannot normalize our scale, which means we have to be bringing in our objects with sizes of, we're going to both of these and go one. If I press Alt Enter, does that do both? No. So size of one, size of one, scale those. There we go. <laughs> Drink, thank you. Yeah, when two nodes are one step away and you can't connect them, it's so strange. It's such a strange behavior. There is so much of the UI in Blender that needs redoing from the, from the, from scratch. Ah, loop and I hate booing. Okay, for the next stream, I'll bring a bottle of whiskey and we can actually drink. <laughs> Let's come back up to here. So I guess now the question is whether or not, because I don't want to be passing through the material necessarily. Um, What happens to our UVs? They get lost completely. So in that case, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it so that you can't use your own things. Am I? <laughs> You're having wine. Maybe I'll do it so that with the brick nodes, which I guess this is kind of similar to, we pass out the points as well. So I think, yeah, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove just all of this because it does not help at all. It makes it just a little bit more confusing. And if I take the take these points and I can pass out points at the same time. So there we go. <laughs> Will I do the herringbone? Yes. I just wanted to make sure that I can make floorboards, uh, which is why we went down the uh, this path of making sure that we had a system which can generate a straight laying pattern. And in theory, I mean, this is pretty, I think this is all right, actually. So if I were to add a, another bit in here, it's not perfect. We are losing some boards sometimes. If I take my angle back to zero, is that going to be slightly better? But we are losing our edge boards. Is that Boolean? Ooh. There's nothing I can do about it, unfortunately. Um, but we do now have a system that you can plug in a ground shape and it will output the, the floorboards for it. 
one thing I do need to do is the spacing between the floorboards. Um, if we had a solidify afterwards. And also a bevel. And if your bevel's broken, make sure you turn off clamp override and that'll be fine. We're only doing a tiny bevel. So it's unlikely to go spectacularly wrong. Um, and let's make sure that we have a proper shader in here as well, just so we can see some lighting on this. And the good thing is as well, is that a lot of the stuff that we do with our um, uh, a lot of the stuff that we do with this working stuff out, like how do we get the textures to come through? How do we get the booleans to work? How do we get the edge to fit the scale? Um, a lot of this stuff is going to be applicable for the other laying styles as well. So let's grab a normal map node. comes in to this. Here we go. Cool. All right. Get zero. Random rotation does not need much at all. And do you know what our original so the original tutorial also had cupping on the boards um which is quite easy to do it's just moving the middle oh there we go just grab these uh we will do two in the x-axis and then we can just pull down the middle board the middle points of the board. Set position down in the Z. Uh, and just of those middle ones. So index. Just need to see where we're going. Index, I'm hoping it's two and three. So equals uh, 2.5 with a boolean of one. There we go, epsilon of one. Uh, so it should be something like this. <laughs> There's literally a slider for sloppy workmanship. It's uh, I'm trying, you know, I'm just trying to trying to make the world more believable. Uh, minus 0.03. So we need like a, a thing for cupping as well, right? It's for older boards anyway, as I'm sure you know. These flies. Uh, all right, so uh, combine, combine X, Y, Z. We need a cupping slider. So let's also just add ourselves a factor here. Zero to one. We want it to go down about like 0 0.01 at the most. So we're going to multiply it by minus because we want to go into the negative 0.01 in the set axis, maybe 0.02 if we're going crazy. And that should do. All right, we have random up or down depending on where the center of the tree is relative to the board. True. And ideally as well, like you should be able to pick between tangential and quarter sawn. So it's like not on all of them, but actually we can do that really easily. Um, Oh, but you know what? We can only do it after they've been instanced. Unless we randomize the Z scale between positive one and negative one. Bingo. Easy. Potentially. So we've got our instance on points. 
yeah, some of these are upside down, which is good. So now they're <clears throat> different amounts of cupping. Uh, if you're in 3.1 Supercat, timings is in your viewport. Uh, no editor overlays, but it's a 3.1 or higher thing. Okay. Is there a problem with some of these being upside down? There is. So we need to flip geometry based on which ones of these are negative. How can you be a master? Teach it. If you teach something, you learn it so well. So good. Um, having floorboards that aren't straight, flat and square is so rare in the States. Really? It's funny because like the house I'm in now was built in the 50s, 1950s. And to me, this is a really modern house. Because like the house we lived in before was like 1730 or something. And the house I lived in before that was I think 1850 or 60. Oh wait, no, maybe the other way around. So, yeah. So we're always used to living in these really old houses that have like really old features. Where's your sense of conservation if you're just ripping up old like traditional features? about the character of the property. All right, so I'm just creating a Boolean here just to make it as lightweight as possible. The information I'm storing as small as possible. I need to find out where these are greater than zero. No, I need to find out where they're less than zero because they're the ones which are flipped um, and potentially equal to. Oh, is that gonna cause a problem? No, I think if it's zero, it shouldn't have flipped, so that's probably fine. Uh, and now we can just do mesh, lip faces on these ones. Oh no. <laughs> oh wait, where are we looking? There we go. Mm, this isn't working. Let's get rid of that and that. All right. Oh yeah, engineered flooring is pretty uniform stuff. If it's like real timber, solid wood flooring. Oh, that's weird. How about that for something which shouldn't happen? Realizing instances recalculates normals. I, I'm glad it's worked, but that should not be automatic. How crazy. <laughs> Your old house is older than my country. <laughs> That's so funny. It's just crazy to me. Like, obviously in the UK, we, we've been around for a little while, um, but it's just crazy to me that those countries like, I guess like ex-USSR places as well. I was watching a video about uh, exclaves, Russians like Uzbekistani exclaves. Just so interesting that that's like a, it, you know, they're like their own principality, but when they've got borders and you have to go through border control to get into a village. It's nuts, but I guess that's what happens. Um, all right, so if we do a subdivision surface, um, keeping the corners, is this going to mess up because of the bounding box, the uh, the Boolean? Miraculously not. So there we go. Now we have smooth cupped boards and we have smooth cupped solidified beveled boards. Final thing for us to do is to squidge them in so that we have a bit of spacing between ports. It needs to be random, which is fine. Um, because like new ones obviously should be fitted fairly close. Uh, there's not really much you can do about it because 
Oswin, maybe you know this better than me, but is it true that boards shrink like 15 times more widthways than lengthways because of the orientation of the grain and the way it shrinks, like the, the grains shrink? I remember being told that. Um, I'm pretty sure it's like 15 times or something like that. Like it's a crazy high number, the difference between longitudinal and lateral shrinkage. So in this case, um, I need generally, well, I guess I'll just have like side shrink or side gaps and end the gaps because that way people can control them separately. It's probably easiest. Uh, we need to do this in our scale, in our board scales. So we can manipulate those and we need to do it with something with respect to the current scale. So wait, so if it's two by one, then it needs to be and I want to scale it in like the same amount all the way around, then, oh, well, I'm making a generator which should, in theory, be able to make any and all. <laughs> so this is my cupping. So you just turn off cupping and random rotation, and then you'd be done. You'd have just regular things. Um, you can always stick my timber shader on here as well, because that's got cupping and random rotation and planar ripple and medullary rays and everything built into it, so uh, that would work. Interior lighting, there we go. cupping away from, I mean I understand the cupping away from the center of the tree because if you've got your tangential boards um, which are going to be so this is obviously your tree and then you can have a little timber lesson for people uh, you can have your quarter sawn which is more expensive cuts which look like this so you have very short grain this way but it's much more um, kind of beautiful grain and you get this sort of interesting cut pattern it's quite it's a bit more wasteful which is why and it requires more uh, managing of the board through the cutting process to make sure that you get the quarter sawn stuff um, but your tangential born stuff which is what most wood is because it's cheaper gets cut like this right so you just basically slice your board through all the way um, plain sawn yeah so plain sawn or tangential Sorry, called tangential because that's a tangent of the board, right? Um, so this stuff is going to have the rings, the growth rings. And the force as this dries is basically for the growth rings to want to straighten, uh, which results in less curvature of the growth rings. But as a result, you end up with a cupped board like this. And you can tell the board is tangentially sawn or plain sawn because it will have a sort of flame flame pattern up it. Uh, whereas like quarter sawn ones are pretty much always straight grain. Um, oak, generally, if you get quarter sawn oak, you get to see the medullary rays better, which are like, that's how you transfer food nutrients around the timber. In fact, there's probably some in here. I think this is oak. Oh yeah, there we go. So you can see how you've got like the grain pattern running straight down, but then you've also got these uh, horizontal ones. And there we go, that's really clear in this one actually. Usually only oak, yeah. There's a couple of timbers on there that, uh, that have medullary rays. Um, but you can see on this like quite clearly, these fainter ones, they're really silvery. If you look at them under the light, they're kind of transparent and they shimmer so it's really beautiful um, and 
they're, they're basically for transferring food horizontally around a tree. So it's, um, yeah. <laughs> Darn. Wood's really interesting. I find, uh, I find it really interesting. Who knew Arendelle is a wood guy too? Well, I am actually a qualified carpenter. So that's why, or well, not a carpenter. I'm a qualified furniture maker and cabinet cabinet maker. Um, but yeah, in a former life. So what are we doing? We're doing our scaling, right? So this scaling has to respect Oh, they're just huge on oak. Oh, I see. Interesting. I guess it makes sense that all wood would have it. Hmm. Um, I can actually, people always say this, like I can draw, I can write like in most of my videos I'm writing, like when I'm writing stuff. This is like all with the mouse. Um, I, sh I have a really bad handwriting with a pen. It's really funny. Um, okay. I'm finding this so confusing, like trying to get my head around the scaling thing. Because if it's really long, I want it to scale less in that axis by a proportion of the X to Y amount. Maybe that is what it is. Maybe if I just divide the X and the Y, that'll give me the ratio. And then I can use this to multiply by vector math. Is this what I mean? Wait, multiply or scale or add or subtract? I subtract. I kind of feel like it's going to be multiply, but we'll try subtract. I'm so confused. Um, so do I, I now, I need to see my ratios. Okay, let me just, so I need to do one which is one way and one which is the other way, I think. I'll find out if this is right in a moment. Oh, somebody asked like a while ago when I started learning geometry nodes. I started learning geometry nodes in November of 2019. Is that right? 2020. 2020. So it was literally like the first time they released any geometry nodes. There was like five or six nodes. Uh, we, like those of us on Discord, we were basically using them straight away. So for people being like, oh, how did you get good at nodes? It's like, well, I just, I've been using them since there was like one node. So it's not difficult for me to learn one more node, if that makes sense, because I only ever have to learn one more. People, yeah. That's why I was trying to get people to get into geometry nodes like a year ago, because it was going to be easier for them and I guess it kind of backfired because of the rewrite from attributes to 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 this, but uh, yeah. All right, I might have to flip this around. Uh, I should probably make some more space. Oh, who did anybody ever make one of those like node wiper add-ons? Let's just gotta make some more space in here. Right, so this is going to be my scale. Let's see if this works. So if I want to move them in the X, oh, that is very slow. Uh, let's make sure we're only looking at what's important. <laughs> yeah, Alt S to swap inputs, it's so useful. Okay, I feel like they're back to front. Is that 
worse? Should it be in this in both? Okay, well at least we found out what it is. So it's the it's the amount that I want to scale by. Is this actually the right size as well? If I set this to point one, is it going to be an offset of point one? No. Hey, Alex, how's it going? Um, we've got an offset of one centimeter. Maybe that's fine. It can just be a relative thing. Um, moisture, sh <laughs> moisture shrinkage calculator. Thanks for checking this out. Um, so radial is the quarter sawn, right? Uh, so flat sawn, three eighths of an inch. For how much? For for what? Out of what size? I mean, five thirty two is much smaller. That's just over a seventh, isn't it? So that's like a sixth. Yeah, close to a sixth anyway, just under. And three eighths, which is going to be. Wait, what's their common, common size there? Um, Oh right, yeah, because they both in thirty twos, eights into thirty two is gonna be four, so it's twelve versus five. Damn, that's pretty significant actually a difference. Um <laughs> disco, yeah. Uh right. So instead of the multiply we can set this to scale and we can just use the divide, which is our ratio. So that's good. Um Oh that's in per foot, okay. So for every, why is that with three eighths? So three eighths is about a centimeter, isn't it? Yeah, pretty much bang on. So for every, that's pretty significant actually. So for like for 12, for 300 mil, you're potentially losing 10 mil just on moisture shrinkage. And I'm guessing that's just for drying, right? That's not throughout the year. That's not atmospheric moisture shrinkage. Although that said, we had some, uh, we had, it, cause when, when I was working as a joiner, the coffee cabinet, we were in a barn basically, and it was open to the elements. And in the middle of winter, the coffee cabinet couldn't close. It was like completely, the doors overlapped by about five mil. And then in, and actually I'll get onto that. So I, there was one time I had a water bottle and it froze while I was at work. It was so cold in the, in the workshop, in the barn, um, that the water, there was literally ice crystals in the water. Um, yeah. But anyway, in the summer, the coffee cabinet was like a centimeter open. It was so much shrinkage, but that was like, uh, that was pine, so that was a softwood anyway, so there's going to be more shrinkage on that. Funny name. It's strange, I look back on that like, oh, I learnt so much in that time, but oh, the adversity. It was hard work. Alright, I want to get my shrinkage to be... on the node group here. I wonder if I should just make it even. Oh wait, no, because obviously it's different. It needs to be different for the ends and the width. Oh wait, that's fine. Um, side gaps, end gaps. This is so stupid, these group inputs. Absolutely useless. these side gaps and gaps um, and these can come up 
actually our angle that should be high up shouldn't it maybe let's call this one rotation um with 3d printers oh every part shrinks anisotropically oh, really so there's um i was talking to chip about 3d printing nuts and bolts and he was saying about how you to get them to fit you have to like make make them different sizes to how they're going to finish which i just think is ridiculous it's just crazy like how how can you do that how can you think that much ahead I just don't really get it um, so our scale also needs to be multiplied uh, randomly, random per board, with a 0 to 1 value. Here we go. And we can plug in our seeds. And I need the seed for one of these to be different because they're basically doing the same thing let's turn off auto offset as well there we go uh, multiply oh wait no just add one we'll add five or something okay good stuff so now as we increase that we are getting a little bit of randomization come to the end cool that's exactly what i wanted So it gaps to be way smaller. That's better. There we go, some gaps. So they're huge, aren't they? Might need to like times this by 10 uh, or divide it by 10. So I'll just add another scale on here, divide by 0.01. I mean, that's 100.1 and now we can set this to something useful cool awesome just gotta be careful with these and that boolean All right, so I think this is all of the headache stuff worked out now. We can jump into the, the herringbone, which is like a whole extra bit of complexity because it's herringbone, but it should be kind of doable. Hey, Chris Pinto, how's it going, man? Right, so floorboard's done. I'm gonna call this one floor straight, I think. And then we'll go for floor herringbone, floor, first eye, floor, chevron. Um, let's create a save this and we're going to add, we're going to delete it. We're going to hit new. A bit of tweaking, trial and error. Yeah, it sounds difficult for 3D printed stuff. And I guess it's different as well if you're sintering, is that the right term? It, basically, if you're doing uh, metal printing, that also sounds tricky. Uh, I do work with denoised in the viewport, yeah. But just look how fast we get to rendering done. So it's, it's sampling quite quickly. So even if it's smudged on like two or three samples, we get to being finished quite quickly. Uh, I'm going to go back into this view. Let's get rid of those boards. We don't want those anymore. All right. So then. What I need to do is remember how herringbone works. Um, 
most slicing software comes with tools to calibrate the shrinkage. Really? That's really good then, actually. Maybe it's, maybe it's fairly straightforward. And I guess, yeah, once you've done like a few runs, it just takes a while, doesn't it, to print? It's not like 10 minutes to print out everything you need. It's like, gotta leave that one going overnight. I guess they they are a bit faster now, aren't they? But still. All right. Um, let's have a think about herringbone. Are we going to be able to build centers? I think we've got to do it. Um, so in just in the same way as the shader. You start by doing it straight so you've got like your verticals and horizontals and then you've got you can rotate 45 degrees i think the challenging thing is is um <laughs> yeah christoph the, so with the shader it's quite simple because you're just working with con like you're just working to delineate a continuous space with bits of maths but what we're needing to do is like find the centers for each of the boards and instance another board and then scale it and then do all of this stuff. So like it should make sense, but, um, and it should be fairly transferable. I'm just trying to work it out. All right. Give me 10 minutes. I really want to go and get another cup of tea because I'm getting a bit cold. It's freezing because it's been raining. So the house is cooled off. Um, I shall be like, I'll be like five minutes. I just want to grab a cup of tea and then we'll come and make herringbone. So sorry if you've been waiting for herringbone. <laughs> I'll be back imminently.
body. I had a, uh, had a realization while I was waiting for the kettle to boil. So all of that stuff that I did with the, uh, the hedge sides doesn't even make any sense mathematically. So I'm just going to delete it. So all of that stuff, like finding the ratio, but then I'm scaling the whole vector by it, which means it's not doing anything for my ratio in the first place, which literally makes it pointless. So I might as well just use my values directly, seeing as that is what I'm doing. And that should be fine. I should just, uh, just need to scale them by a random value and then they should be fine. They should be good. If I set this to point two, that's pretty big. Um, so I just also want to scale this down a little bit. Uh, shift D point one should be fine. I think. Maybe even 0.01. You want it to do almost nothing. Cool. Awesome. Right. That saved me a bit of embarrassment. So back to back to our herringbone. This one's gonna be floor herringbone. Here we go. Oh, so I bought some carrots back with me. I, I learned from my mistakes last time and I bought smaller ones because last time they were so big. I could like, I thought I was going to break my teeth, but now, sorry, that was probably really loud. And they're much, much crunchier, much smaller. Do you have uh, in the background something that helps? Oh, wait, sorry. Do you have a background in something that helps you make sense of procedural approaches to this kind of stuff? Um, I know <laughs> I have my furniture making course and I've got my interior design degree and I spent a long time painting. I think it's just something that you learn by doing, just learn by doing. I learned it all through Blender, like all of the maths and everything, just learned it through Blender. Um, I'm making a geometry node based floor plan or literally just the floors. This is literally just a floor surface generator. So for laying out all of your floorboards and things in a sort of semi automated way, but this could, this could work with, sorry, this could work with a, a procedural floor plan generator because then you can just output a floor plan. And let's say you've got four or five of these different generators like herringbone and straight and maybe like one for tiles or something. You can randomly assign values to each section of the floor, have those values separate out your geometry and be fed into one of these generators and then have them all joined back on the other side. So yeah, you can, you can use it as part of a larger system. It's just, you, you do kind of need to generate the smaller systems along the way, which is what, this is why I really like Blender, not Houdini. Well, I mean, Houdini is ace obviously, but I don't know, it's just not really for me because um, the, I kind of feel like when I'm doing stuff in Blender that I'm d discovering it. And that sounds like kind of a weird justification for using it, but with a lot of this stuff, at the moment at least, you know, it's going to be different in two or three years, but at least at the moment, you're, you're often, if you're doing something which is kind of newish, while I'm sure that people have made these things already, potentially, I've not seen any through like Twitter, and I'm fairly active on Twitter and Discord. So I just, I don't know, it just kind of feels like you're, you're forging a new path when you make stuff, which feels good, I guess. Hmm. Small carrots are good. Uh, 
Ah, yeah, carrot ASMR. Okay, now we'll save the other one for later. Let's go do some blender again. So, How do we do herringbone? So herringbone patterns. I'm going to draw it straight so it's easier. Um, if you have, oh, do you know what? Maybe this is going to be easier than I was hoping, which is a good thing. Um, I need to have, yeah, I think it is going to work. So if you have a row of boards in a straight stack with two times uh, the length of a board as your center spacings, so that you have a one board gap in between, right? This space needs to be one board. And then what you can do is you can add one unit, one width to each row in this direction. And that's going to offset for each one. And this will be times by your row index. Right. So what this means is you're going to get this offset row like this. Uh, generally residential herringbone is like four or five or uh, sometimes it can be three but generally or if it's bricks actually if it's bricks or tiles it might be two so it's, it's rarely longer though you're not going to get long herringbone. Um, not that it matters if we're making a procedural system though. So if you have one set like this Then we just have to do the same in the y-axis. See, mathematically, it's pretty similar to the shader. It's just like, it's just a little bit different. So you do have to find your feet with it when you start. However, all of the technical stuff we've kind of already sorted with the other, with the other one with the straight flooring stuff. So this should just be more or less working out how to get the her the herringbone pattern. So what I'm going to do is make a grid, um, which needs to be the size of our floor plan. And actually I need two grids, but at least they're regular grids this time. So, um, I need to have a look at my group that we just made. Floor straight. Let me just get ahead of myself by calling this ETK. Here we go. Just so I remember not to delete it. Um, so in here we need our, this should be board length. Should it? Oh no, maybe it's fine. Ah, that's fine. Uh, so we're going to go for our length. No length deviation for herringbone, they're all the same. Width needs to come in because we're using that as our our unit size. Um, we're going to need a rotation. We're going to need actually all of the rest of these. There we go, awesome. Um, and into our outputs, we can also add the same our texture fixing and that should be fine right save delete I'm just gonna also do a incremental save all right so now what we need is a mesh line in here 
and we're going to be using this for our points um, because we can get away with making a grid quite simply with modulo dividing floor. Everything is dividing floor. I don't know if I said this on this stream or if it was the last stream, but like everything is dividing floor. <laughs> if you can do dividing floor, you can make any shape. And a bit of trig helps. So um, we've got our mesh line. There we go. We need to know how many points we need. And uh, this is going to be dependent on our rotation. We need to make two grids anyway. So one's, they're going to be the same size, I think, uh, but just different orientations. Sorry, I'm just thinking aloud still here. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So I need uh, to do everything based on the index and we will come back to our mesh line. We're defining indices with a combine X, Y, Z. And into our X, we can just do modulo of our index. And into our Y, we can just do divide and floor. There we go, nice and easy. And uh, we actually plug the same value into both of these. Uh, so that can be like four or five or something. Um, and then we need another one for the Y. multiply these two together that's going to give us our total number of points for the mesh line and now you can see quite que quite quite queasy quite quickly we've got ourselves a grid of points uh, if I just do a mesh to points then you'll see that is exactly what we have these are all one meter spacing and that's fine that's exactly what we want so our y dimension for these ones. In this one, because we're looking at this grid in this sense, uh, we're going to go for boards which are this way round. I think that probably makes most sense. In which case, because at the moment we're all in one meter lengths. Sorry, yeah, one like single unit. That's why everything's good to do stuff in ones. Uh, we can now multiply this by a vector, which is going to be our uh, two times the length in the x by one times the width in the y. You're making dice shaders, like D&D &D dice. Have you shared any on Discord? Um, oh, the pack's getting a bit crunchy. Oh yeah, you have. Awesome, look at these. They are pretty wacky. To be fair, you can't actually read them. I do really like this one, this icy one. Have you got rain marched bubbles inside it? These look neat. I really like these. I love a good kind of psychedelic texture. Um, let's throw a times two onto our length. That'll help us. And we can also just use this for our scale. So length times width is just the scale. Nice and easy. Um, so after this, we can just, instead of using the meshed points, let's switch this out for a instance on points. And we'll just stick on a plane just like we did last time. Or a grid, sorry. Grid mesh. One by one, stick on our scale. Bob's your uncle. Good stuff. All right, have we got overlaps? Quite possibly. 
Oh no, it seems alright actually. Cool. So now what we need is to offset these by one times the width. Oh, we don't even need to think about the width. Uh, we can just simply add to the, let's make a bit more space. Um, we can add to our X just the, can, yeah, we can literally just add this to the X. Oh, not quite. Uh, add that multiplied by 0.5. No. <laughs> um, so in that case, it does need to be based on the width. So in that case, it needs to be after we've scaled it. Um, switch those around. Uh, we can add now. This is our index multiplied by the width. Here we go. Width index combine into the x into the. There we go. That's better. All right. So I'm not worried about the numbers yet. We'll work that out when we get to um, putting this in a box. I guess this really needs to reset every, just so we don't go like crazy far out. Um, what we should do is we should modulate our index that's doing our X offset. If I, you can see if I set this to like some amount, then we're getting like a little bit of offset. If this is four, then we're getting four rows and then it resets. Um, we need to make sure interesting. You always have to have a length, which is some multiple of the width. So I'm just wondering if I should actually not have explicit inputs for the length and width. And maybe I should have a, um, should we do? Uh, so instead of, I guess we probably want to use the length as our guiding value. Um, and I'll just, instead of width, I'm going to call it pattern offset and we need it as a, an integer. So let's add another one of these. If there's a proper name for like herringbone offsets, then let me know. Uh, let's go from zero, I guess, up to with a default value of four. And we can now get rid of this. So the, the pattern offset needs to be, or the width, sorry, needs to be the pattern offset divided, the length divided by the pattern offset. Like that. Okay, now we can get rid of the width. And if we're doing four here, then we can modulo this at four. And then that basically means that the next step, or do we need to do it at five? I think we need to do it at five to make sure that we have a whole one, like all of the because we need all of the permutations basically so we need to add one here um, and that's basically going to make sure that we have this entirely offset as well as the other one um, and that is definitely four off anyway oh do you know what maybe that's not right it's not right because it needs to be offset by 10. The reason it's not right is because we need all of our vertical boards in here, right? So these ones are all going to be filled up with vertical boards. 
and if we have that crossing then that's not going to work so we need to make sure that we are doing this up to like 30 right and uh, instead of five let's see how far we need to go needs to be this one needs to be eight uh, currently there's an offset four so we need to double it multiply by two all right there we go and if that was five it's still going to work and if it was three two or one great all working well so now we just need the alternative um sure how to do um. I wonder if I can just offset this sideways and then rotate them that literally might work um, so let's use another Let's use a transform. And then I want to join these together. And this one we're going to move left. In fact, maybe we can just do it by the scale. Not quite. Um, so we just want to go left by the length of a board that'll be fine and then uh, we want to rotate these ones by 90 degrees might also want to move them down as well uh, so let's go into our rotation here um, we need to make sure that we have zero for the first however many points and then one for the next one and it's quite easy to do we can just simply find um, the index. So index. We want to step this zero and then one based on. Um, oh, do you know what? We don't even need to do that. We can literally just do compare greater than or equal to. Uh, in here, compare. Here we go. Integer greater than or equal to the total number attribute domain size of this first one number of points oh, these freaking flies uh, there we go and now we've got a zero and a one which we can now use as a switch which is useful because we can rotate by uh, 90 degrees so let's put this into a switch which is going to be a vector into our rotation and half of these up high by two. Now then, why is this doing all of them? Oh, my fault. Weirdly, the point count in a mesh and the point count in a point cloud are not inter. Uh, they can't be exchanged. Okay, so pi by two, 90 degrees. All right, I think I remember this happening for the shader as well, actually, which is good. So what we can do is we can now make sure that we're getting our transform off because it's half a board out in the X and the Y. Um, so this is our width. Just need to multiply this by 0.5 and then add it to both x and y. You know when something's easier than it, you feel like it should have been. Like, have I done something wrong? It just doesn't feel quite right. Um, well, 
All right, let's just make sure that we're overshooting our domain anyway. And then we can do the same crop and add on all of the other bits that we need. I feel like this should have been harder. Um, I need to get those sides trimmed in a bit, I think. Because we've moved this in the positive direction. I wish there was an invert toggle on these transform nodes. Um, let's use a scale node. Scale by minus one. Okay, that's kind of too far. Scale by 0.5. Still not really right. Uh, interesting. Maybe. Hmm. All right, what happens if we just add a bunch more? That does seem to work fairly well, actually. Um, just keeps adding them. As long as we're making it significantly or, you know, markedly larger than the actual floor plans, then I think that should work. Um, so far, our Our X dimension. How big are we going here? Um, I need to double check my floor works actually. Let me just do that floor strain. So if I have a length of point 0.2. Okay, it does work. Awesome. I was worried there was going to be just like two. Uh, it wasn't going to handle scaling. Um, all right, back into this one. So the length of these governs the number. Oh, right, yeah, so that's how it works. <laughs> Literally forgetting everything. So we need a bounding box. And I need to know what the X and the Y size are. So uh, max subtract men. And then we can do a separate X, Y, Z. And then we can use this to control the, uh, the numbers of these. Um, and that's going to be based on the length and the width. So let's bring these down a bit. Um, so the X is going to be the length of the boards, um, which is currently 0 0.2. Let's just go for one for now. Um, so if it's one, then the maximum should be divided by the number of these boards. I think we're actually losing a whole board as well at the start. So it needs to be at least plus one. Um, and we're going to have to do all of this stuff with rotation as well, like the pre-rotate, post-rotate thing. Uh, so divide, and then we're going to go floor. And this should be our X size. potentially with one added. Um, so let's just bring this over and we'll check them. And in fact, we will also align mesh by mesh. So X and Y both centered like this and like this, awesome. Uh, and I might also just transform this one up just so that we can see it. That does seem a little excessive, doesn't it? I get that the, um, the horizontal transform is potentially not helping, uh, but 
do we need it for the pattern offset? We definitely need to switch as well. So um, when we have an odd number of pattern offsets, our 0 0.5 addition, which is this one, uh, this one is no longer relevant. So let's use a switch node in here. Set this to float. And we need to know when we have an even number um, on our pattern offset so we can modulate this by two which is going to give us our odd even switch like that and now that's going to be correcting itself okay um the y pattern so we need more boards in the y direction uh, and this is quite simple as well. We can just control shift D. We'll be taking our Y axis. Come down here. And then we need to use our Y um, dimension, which is the length divided by the pattern offset. That's all good. That just plugs in up here. Are you serious? And in this case, I think I'm going to add a few. So I might add five to this. Just so we have a definite. Now let's go with 10. 10 is good. All right. So if we have different sizes, as long as it's bigger, it doesn't really matter. go too much bigger you do run into problems but that's like way outside of what people will do it does start to overlap when you have 13 times longer than width and I just think that's probably unrealistic so yeah nobody in their right mind is going to be laying 10 by 1 boards uh, so let's go with let's go with 4 that's fine I'm happy with that Okay, um, yeah, I'm not too worried about this overhang. In fact, I think it's probably useful. Hmm. If boards over two and a half meters, we run into problems with as well. I wonder if I should just add, just have some like limits in here which help me just like switch and add an extra number just so it's not doing it all the time because if you have like a really big building but a normal ratio of like width to length then it's not going to be problem a problem that you have a big overlap that you have like a, a small overlap um, but if you if I made it so it was like considerable and you have a really big room and it's generating like a thousand or ten thousand boards or something maybe i'll leave it as it is for now um let's see what happens if we rotate this nice works um in which case the next thing for us to do would be Add in our pre and post rotation. So this is always the first thing. And we want a geometry transform. And on here we can do a rotate. And this one is going to be combine XYZ. It's for our rotation. There we go. And then so this is our pre. And then we just need to duplicate this to the end. Now in our other one, there were two, oh, there were two transforms because I was doing the align mesh manually. Which is 
it's probably a bit faster. So uh, let's do that as well. Got our original align mesh, got a new align mesh. Sorry, I'm a new bounding box. Uh, instances realize these, and then we can get our overall bounding box. There we go, that's worked. And then we can just find out where our centers are. A couple of mixed RGBs lets me take an average really quickly. Just because we can like mix to that 0 0.5 position and then find out the difference between them or subtract one from other. So this is a transform. And that should that should be fine. Yeah, so now if we look at this against our original bounding box, that overlaps perfectly. And as we move that around, good stuff. So now we just need another transform afterwards, which is going to do our post rotation. Uh, come on. Group input rotation. And this one needs to be multiplied By minus one. There we go. All right. Uh, so now, if we rotate this, we are getting a bit of weirdness. Oh God, is it doing this thing again? to work then because we need to do our rotation and we need to do our translation kind of works um, uh, control J here we go this one is our uh, center. <clears throat> this one is our post rotation. And then it kind of works, but I still think we probably want to add a few more in the Y axis just to make sure. We can add 20, that's fine. I don't want to ever take a corner off potentially out of a board there. The issue is it if it's like 45 degrees, right, which is basically what you're going to have, uh, you're just immediately losing a corner. Um, and I do feel like we could push this better. I think we could get the offset to be a bit more um, direct. bit more a bit more square we need to move it like three down uh, so yeah let's come back in here so what I want is instead of moving it by what is this number this is our length so group input length there we go instead of doing that what we want to do um, These little satellite nodes, how do you how do you add things to them? They're so annoying. Node? 
properties maybe no properties okay pattern offset uh, right and uh, that needs to be modulated by two hey x-ray delta one um, which maths book or course would you recommend for geometry nodes beginners? That's a good question. I would recommend that you just use the nodes. That's how I've learned it. Uh, three blue, is it, wait, three blue, one brown? Is that his name? Uh, everybody references him, so I'm guessing that's quite good. Uh, what's her name? Holmer. Freya Holmer does a lot of vector math tutorials um, so she's good and um, maybe art of code I'm honestly not sure I think you just run into the problems that you run into and then you look up how to solve them on a kind of one by one basis um, yeah but if anybody else has any suggestions for, uh, for maths resources Drop them in the chat. I am still planning on making a course for maths for CG artists. I've got like some pretty good ideas for it. I just got curtailed by another course that I'm like obligated to make. And I'm like contracted to other people. Oh, is Freya streaming? Oh, and Khan Academy. Yeah, that's a good one. People always bring up Khan Academy for coding as well, I think, right? So the Khan Academy pre-calc unit. Interesting. I'll have to check that out as well. We don't have any of these names like pre-calc in the UK. We don't, so I don't actually know what that means. <laughs> I find it so strange when you like watch American TV shows um, about the, about like, what maths courses they're taking or like you know whatever school subjects they're taking and they've all got such strange names like why don't you we just call it maths we just take maths or english or french you know it's just like we don't really specialize in modules we just do a subject um oh all right I want to get this offset working a little bit cleaner. Apologies for the ASMR carrot. Just so tasty. Um, if I like double this. me a little bit <laughs> you don't even call it maths it's because you only do one math like what does that, what does that even mean although I kind of get the argument that it's like mathematics plural actually no I don't get that argument because if the s is pluralizing it then you should add the s to the shortened version in my opinion, unless it's like a possessive S. I mean, even if it was a possessive S, it would still work. Okay. Anyway, right. So we're getting our offset. That's good. Uh, we need to do something in my Y axis. See, that does look a little bit, maybe a little bit cleaner. Now I just kind of feel like it should be a bit more of a block like that, you know. Mm. 
All right, so that's like minus seven times and 0.25 times. <laughs> Mathematics is, you wouldn't need the final S then, and you're good with just an apostrophe. News, news isn't singular, because it's like new stuff. Maybe I'm misinterpreting what new, what is the etymology of news? Interesting. The English word news developed in the 14th century is a special use of the plural form of new. It literally is just like, there's lots of new stuff. It's the news. <laughs> Language is so weird. All right. Um, how do I parameterize these values? News like in newspaper. Yeah, but it's the paper of news. Um, so let's grab the, if this is seven, why is it seven? Wait, if I go, if I go eight, no, oh, it's not open any, is it? You're saying news are singular. Have a look at the Wikipedia page. Hmm, is it news is or news are? Well, I think when you're talking about the news, like watching the show, which is kind of called the news, in that case, it would be the news is because it's that thing. But if you were talking about like what was in all of the news, like all of the new, all of the, like the stuff that was in all of the stories, then that would be plural, right? <laughs> English is terrible. Yeah, I do not envy English learners. It's just crazy that it's like the most spoken or one of the most spoken languages in the world. Um, Hmm. Yeah, basically all languages, because they're made by people and they're made by what's popular, pop, yeah, popular by kind of societal standards, aren't they? So it's, it all just kind of becomes the new, the, the new mode of speaking. I find it strange as well, like how you can be like intuitive about the way that you, um, like for me, spelling is intuitive, even though there's so many different permutations, it's like in my head, I'm kind of like, oh yeah, it kind of feels like it should be an A-U-G-H kind of O rather than an O-W or an O-U-G-H or a I'm just glad I speak English as my first language. But I remember learning French at school and it's just like, it's so easy compared to, or like we did Latin as well. And it's just like, it's such a simple rule set. I couldn't do it, but it was much simpler than English. Hmm. This is an especially good carrot. Okay, so what's going on here? So I think... I think we want something like this. Um,
and because this is minus three, it kind of feels like it's one minus the pattern offset, which I know seems really weird, but I just feel like it might be that. So let's have a try. This is why I think it doesn't matter if you can do maths in uh, before you come to Blender, because I don't really do much maths. Yeah, I'm just, you know, I just make it up. And like that probably looks like that very simple bit of addition. And I try it and it doesn't work even slightly. But is it not working by a pattern? So when it's four, it works. If it was minus three, does it work with more? No. Um, Oh, it's minus five when it's eight. And it's minus seven when it's nine. Mm. Somehow this is completely ignored. Oh, because it's multiplying by zero. Um, let's just mute that. Okay. So let's try, let's try this again. So minus three for four. When it's three, it's minus two, which is promising. And then it's minus three again. and then it's minus four. And then it's minus five. Is there any reason here? Okay. So by that reasoning, this should actually be one, which is not. Okay, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pretend that I don't mind that it's a little bit out of, out of crack. Oh, it would be so much better if it was half over though. Um, all right, there must be some maths about this. Um, Let's take this, are we, is this our translation? Uh, so I reckon it's going to be something to do with the length. Can we just add that? No. All right. Um, so this one, or this one. And then if I switch this one, I'm sorry, this is not really making much sense as a viewer. Um, hey, all right, I'll take that as a small win. I think that is marginally better. Um, so that's the width, half the width. Yeah, all right, I'll take that, I'll take that. I know that was probably quite painful to watch, but we do now have um, fairly good spacing, Ooh, maybe. When it gets really long, it does just get a little bit. Um, let's see if we've got that one with the the overlay, yeah, that's not good. But realistically, not gonna go above. I mean, that's like worst case is probably eight. 
and maybe 2.4 meter length. All right, if I rotate this, we are clean. And if I rotate it on here, are we just going inside it? Are we? Just, only just. Quite a bit there. Let me just add a few. I'm going to do the lazy solution. Which is just add a few more boards. There we go. We got to 30. That's fine. That's a huge amount of padding. But I think it's probably given us enough clearance all the way around. Yeah, we have. Great. There you go there, minus 45 degrees. That's giving us our up and down. And then we just need to do our crops. Easy, easy. So let's take our original forms. Uh, we can take a mesh from way back. Let's get rid of that. So we're going for geometry in. Uh, geometry, there we go, and we can do this twice. Can you clamp the range so they can't break it? Um, who would do a herringbone at an angle to the wall like that? That is actually the way herringbones are laid, is pointing towards the wall. You should always be pointing towards the wall. Uh, so, yeah should always be 45 degrees. <laughs> Normally you would also lay some straight uh, straight boards around the edge of your rooms uh, just to kind of crop it and fill it in. You'd maybe have like a decorative string as well. All right. Um, so we've got our geometry coming through here. Let's extrude it. Extrude mesh. And we also want to translate it down a little bit, just so that we have something. Um, minus 0.01, that'll be fine. But I did it like 30 degrees, that's true. I mean, I was just, and it, you shouldn't, but of course, what if your geometry is weird? I mean, it depends on the room you're laying in. I'm just trying to be to be generous to people although i could clamp it and just be like you are only allowed this one option you can have any color as long as it's black all right uh boolean mesh booleans intersections join that in like that nice good to see it's all disappeared that's what we like I hate booleans all right that's a bit better Is it? It's much worse. Okay. <sighs> I'm not really sure what to do about this. I mean, look at this mess. Minus 45 degrees, that's like what you need. Probably doesn't help that our scale is all like exactly the same. So what we can do is we can subtract. I'm just going to actually copy this out of the other node group. So group, floor straight. Let's come in here. We are just going to subtract these, control C, control V. <laughs> the booleans, they're just, if you have to use them, I swear, it's either we run up against booleans or loops, and there's just no way around it. Oh, 
I'm expecting us to basically have to put in a clamp that stops it from being able to be exactly a scale of one. Because I reckon it's because these edges are all aligned. I'm hoping that it's because all of these edges are aligned. And this is going to be our side gap. Oh, and then we have these little satellite nodes that I can't do anything with because I want two things on here. So now I have to go and get the original one and copy over. It's just daft. All right, so side gaps. Let's give a little bit of side gap. Oh, that's an improvement. So it basically is, uh, I will break if you don't have any edge spacing. Okay, so our minimum can be a super small amount, and our maximum can be uh, 0 0.001. There we go. Okay, that's too small. Does uh, it have to be even bigger? Come on. So it has to be at least a millimeter gap in between each board. That's atrocious. Uh, terrible. All right, well, do you know what? It's actually not a millimeter. All right. Seed can come in here. I don't think we've got any other seeds yet. Uh, we need a random rotation option. So here we go, this one is our gaps. And then we need um, rotation. Oh, good Lord. Uh, oh, sorry, that was me being dumb. Um, this one. Maybe we can do this on an, a transform instances node. So, instances, trans, uh, rotate, sorry. Going to go in the local space around zero. Yeah, around zero. And we're doing it in the y-axis randomly, uh, which is fine. So I just need a scale. Vector mass scale. Uh, this comes into a random vector. And our scale comes off one of these, let's start colouring these as well. So seed plugs in, that's always important, and we need our rotation into the scale, like so. So just need to make sure that these scale ones, zero to one, that's correct. Zero to one, rotation is fine. I like positive seeds, there we go. Hey, <laughs> Vector Pro, how's it going, man? Uh, so random rotation. That's oh, that's not that's it. That's not right. Uh, random rotation goes in here. So just need to make sure that we're only doing this in the y-axis. So I think it was 0 0.05 to minus 0 0.05 or something, wasn't it? For the absolute worst house in the world. That's the same. Something like that. All right, uh, and cupping as well. We are instancing a grid. Let's 
double check that we're working the right orientation here. That's not actually, we're going the Y axis. So that can be a problem. It's going to make the indexing a little bit difficult because it's going to be uh, 0, 1, uh, 2, it's going to be 1 and 4, which should be fine. It should be fine. Um, so again, I can just copy the nodes. Let's go ahead and do that. Uh, cupping is <coughs> our grid all of this. There we go. Control C, Control V. So if it's one and four, um, let's just use equals and an and node. That'll be fine. So utilities, boolean math, and when the index integer is equal to one, uh, or sorry, or it is equal to two, three, and then four should be the next one. There we go. Awesome. This will be multiplying by a random value uh, from our cupping amount on here. So we need to do, actually let's just bring this up. Um, so we need to have our cupping plugged in. We need to have our random value plugged in as well. Random value between some small amount and some other small amount. So we're going to come at a maximum to a centimeter, wasn't it? So minus 0.01 to 0.01. Cupping. And there we go. For some reason, <clears throat> excuse me, for some reason our um, our things are all the right way up, even though they've been. Oh no. That's not how this works. Uh, okay, 0 0.01. And then we do we do the scale. I'm getting all tripped up on myself. All right. Uh, so the Z on here, instead of it being a one, this one wants a random value. There we go. So seed plugs in. We need to add a value to this. And this is going to be minus one to positive one. There we go. Now we've got some of these going up and down. That's good. Rotate is good. Transform is fine. Then we realize them and they will get flipped anyway for some reason. And then we do our mesh boolean, which seems to be working. And then um, Uh, is that it? <laughs> Wait, what? Uh, okay, random rotation is done. Cupping is done. Caps is done. Pattern offset is done. Length is off. Okay, I think yeah, I think we've done it. I think we've done herringbone. Oh no! Do you know what we haven't? Because we haven't transferred our attributes out for the shaders. So that's very important. We need to make sure. Um, we also need to make sure that we're smooth shading. So set shade smooth. Oops. And we can turn on maybe. No, we can't. Well, I'll just leave that off for now. So uh, what we need to do is we need to start plugging in. We have board scale to plug out. We have points to plug out. Which instance is... I wonder if it's possible to get our rotation done in before this, because I'd rather... 
this one's going to need a rotation out as well just in case you want to do something the idea is that you can pass it out and then you can use it on a manual uh, manual one afterwards so let's get rid of that and i'm going to add this to this should be a little bit faster anyways do it this way um, still works great perfect so we have our points we have our board scale nothing's happening with that afterwards and um, we have our uh, rotation although it's just per board it doesn't take into account the fact that all of our points have been rotated as well well never mind that's a problem for another day so this vector, this is going to be our board rotation. And then we need a random per board as well. Gravity, just grabbed your toolkit a minute ago. Oh, great. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for your patronage. I hope it's useful. Let me know if there's anything you want adding or if you find any bugs as well. There's a lot of good stuff in there, though. I use it basically every day. Um, These are our cutters again. The random board one. Oh, do you know what actually? I need to capture. Makes me realize I've just made a mistake. It's not really a mistake, but it would be useful if I knew what I was doing. So instead of instance on points, I need it to come from my actual points and I need to capture the scale and rotation on those points. And I did that incorrectly as well in the straight boards. That's fine. Uh, capture attribute, it's gonna be integer. It's on the points. Uh, it's not gonna be an integer, it's gonna be a vector. I need two of these. So we have scale and then rotation and these plug into scale. There we go, scale and rotation. And I also need that to be added to basically the same thing, but on my main one. Uh, so capture the attribute vector instance because we're going to use our output attribute here for the scale to correct our textures. Um, so that should be fine. I just need to add these together. If you've got multiple things coming out and you're like, oh, how do I get these into a single socket passing out? Just add them together because if you think about it is like term, in terms of the spreadsheet um, everywhere that you don't have the thing that you're looking for it's just going to be a zero so if you want to make sure that you have your thing in two different places uh, you just need to basically add them and it'll kind of consolidate into one column I know it's not very logical but that is the method so there we go vector onto this one and the last one here is going to be a vector per board let me just double check how I did this I'm pretty sure I just did it captured yeah literally just captured on the instance with the seed there we go control C control V nice And from the seed again, and I will just add to this one as well, just to make sure it's different, basically, from any that's come before. Same for this one, I'll make sure I'm adding. Just because there's a few places where we're using 
a random value on the points. So like the cupping is done and the um, <laughs> Julie just said, I'm afraid I'll never understand what to choose in those drop downs in the capture attribute node. So let's make this a teachable moment. Um, you need to decide what you are capturing data on. So in this case, I've made a bunch of instances um, and I need to store information per instance. So in this case, we're doing it. I need a random value for that whole instance. So we can capture it on the instance domain. And therefore, when it gets realized, it will adopt it correctly, right? So that's how that's why instance is really useful, because you can put something on an instance, a bit of data like one or whatever, any number. And then when you realize it, all of the points of that index will take that uh, that value. Uh, when it's point, it's going to be per point per vertex or point cloud point. Um, and that information is going to be stored uh, in your, if you think about the spreadsheet here, it's going to be either in your vertices or point cloud points, right, for in store being stored in the, in the point in the edge. It's going to be on your edge element. So things like crease, you're going to want to store in your edges. Things like shade smooth, you want to store in your faces because that's where these things are. Shade smooth material index. Um, remember that when you pass something out to be processed by a shader, I hope I'm not wrong in saying this, but I, I believe at least this is this used to be how it is. And I'm pretty sure it still is. Everything being passed out to a shader will be read by the shader as a vertex or a point attribute. Um, curves are confusing, but I'm pretty sure you just choose between point and spline, depending on whether you want it on the whole spline or the or just the control points. All right. Whew. Let's stick a shader on these. Um, do you know what? There's no way to add a shader to the other one. Let's make sure we've added that. Board shaders. Yeah, let's go with that. Um, oh God, where am I? Yeah, using the spreadsheet is, it used to be more useful, I think. But uh, I feel like fields, the access to the direct data using the viewer node and all of this stuff is often more complicated. I find like, at least with Svertrock, which I know you know, the, like you have the temporal stethoscope, which you can kind of build it into a grid like I was doing on the stream, uh, the course stream today. And then you've also got the text viewer, which you can use as a text viewer. It would be useful if we could also use the spreadsheet directly to write data to the spreadsheet. Um, but maybe in the future. Let's pick this material, let's chuck it on a set material node. There we go. All right, uh, rendered. Do we have any shaders? I'm hoping this just works out of the box. That would be super useful. Output attributes. We have got. Call that one scale. Oh, it's. Oh, I remember why it's like this. Um, because we did the boolean and we didn't capture it. We didn't transfer it from the pre boolean to the post boolean but that's fine. Uh, board rotation, I don't have to worry about, but the board, the, sorry, the random, the random board. I've just realized as well that we've got 
90 degree offsets between generators and that's not very good practice. They should all be the same way and I think that way should be Y orientated, not X orientated as I have now. All right, um, random board, I think we just called one rand, didn't we? Okay, so that's working. Mm, close to working. EV map works, which is great. So there's two things I want to do. We've got to transfer it to the post boolean version so that we're not getting these weird corners because it's literally going like scaling to zero. Um, and then we also need to rotate our rotations. I really hope this is possible. Um, let's go here. There we go. Uh, can I just add 90 degrees or can I? Probably. Utility, rotate Euler. Hey, Riaz. We're nearly done, by the way, Riaz. So, how is the fair? How is the design fair? Gonna go with the local, or doesn't really matter, but there we go in the one, change it by 90 degrees. There we go, that's perfect. Or is it perfect? And then I need to flip my, maybe I didn't mean to rotate it. Maybe I meant to change the way the scaling's working. Um, and then I'll probably need to change everything else when I, um, let's do that. That worked mysteriously well. Um, I hate it when you expect something to not work or expect it to take more steps and then it just works and it's like, have I, surely I've forgotten something. Surely something's gone wrong here. Right, let's go back to, let's just go into material preview. I just want to check that these are aligned correctly. Um, nope. Damn it. I always forget EV takes ages to render. All right, jump to the end. Nice, nice. That's uh, that's what we want. One point two. We'll go for the length. Um, in fact, yeah, and we'll go for a pattern offset four. Kind of chunky, but they look good. Uh, the grain direction is now correct, so that's good. And. Um, Okay, so the we went to the World Design Fair and Indonesia, Ukraine and Syria are worth having a look at. And apparently lots of people lined up for Great Britain. Who was um I wonder what the Great Britain one was. I mean I wonder what they all are. I expect they're all on Dazine as well. If I don't know if people know Dazine. Dazine is like where you go for architecture and design. If you want to know good a good blog or a good for um, a good like news site for architecture and design is Dizeen. Dizeen is the one that you want. Here we go. It's got everything. Um, so what was this? It was the design fair. The world design fair. in Abu Dhabi. The 2020 Expo. Oh, I feel like I remember you saying that it was um, delayed. Yeah, for sure, this one. Um, I wonder if they've got a list of them. I kind of want to see all of these now. Expo 2020. Are they all just country pavilions? Um, oh no, they've got the other ones as well. 
Oh, it'd be cool to design one. Maybe might get a chance to do one in a few years. Gotta aim for something. So you said the Indonesia one was good. Wait, did you say Azerbaijan? Oh no, Ukraine and Syria. Oh, it's filled with stuff about his culture. Interesting. I think it's just like, as in, as the pavilions themselves, architecturally, I often find quite interesting. Uh, where are you up to now? L? Oh, he's going to be before that, isn't it? Wow, the Kazakhstan one looks cool. Ivory Coast must be pretty close. Ukraine. Ukraine's going to be right at the end. Uh, the Island Pavilion. Of course, they made it green. Indonesia. There we go. Uh, let's jump to the end. Ukraine. UK one. Oh, I've seen the pictures of the UK one. Ukraine as well. And uh, who was the last one? Indonesia. We got that one. Um, Syria. I wish there was just like a list down the side of the web page. Here we go, Serbia, uh, Slovenia. All right, next page. Um, Syria Pavilion. Oh, there's a virtual expo as well. You can just like check them out online. That seems pretty nice. Wow, the place, the space for it is huge. Must have been, I wonder how much it's cost, these, this kind of expo. Looks nuts though. Uh, the Indonesia one. That's a terrible visual, but props to them. I mean, how low res is that sky texture? I love that they've got like um, they've got Indonesia written in Google font and Google letters. It looks alright though. Uh, kind of looks like a cinema. That's pretty interesting. Uh, the UK feeling was dumb. I really didn't like the design for it when I saw it. And they've not really shared any pictures. Ukraine Pavilion. At least this one looks like a real building. I need to have a proper look at them later. Looks neat. Here's the sky stretch. It literally was stretched, yeah. You can literally tell that the stars are not circle. I reckon it was that one nighttime HDRI they have on HDRI Haven that's just like a really low res grainy sky. I definitely need to go to one of those art fairs. They sound cool. All right. Let's fix this terrible, terrible stretching we've got at the edge. And we do this with... Hmm. We need to transfer the board scale. It's only for the scale and the rotation. Uh, sorry, scale and random because they're the only ones which are on the, uh, the thing. Um, so let's do an attribute transfer. On our geometry, I'll just do it here. I need two of these. So one's going to be nearest, nearest. Set to face because that's what it's picking. Same for this one, nearest face. Uh, top one can be vector as well. And in this case, we're actually taking the attribute 
from this capture. What am I doing? Did I do it wrong before as well? I'm like double double guessing everything I've done now. Uh, so this group floor strain. Yeah, I did. Look at that. Terrible. I wonder how this even worked. Because I'm literally transferring it from the thing that was already broken. It's no wonder it was a bit janky. All right, let's do that. That should be correct. I'll have to check in a moment. Um, because it should be coming from before the boolean transferred to the boolean. Bizarre. Um, and we're transferring this one as well. Attribute, attribute. This one goes in here. This one goes up here. Nice. So that does seem to have worked. You do see a boolean because there's no other way for me to get these uh, conveniently to size. You know, like if I wanted to just, I don't know, make this room L-shaped or something, then we get this monstrosity. It is frustrating, but there we go. As soon as we get a 2D crop, it's going to be better. Um, but this is pretty, pretty okay. So I'm calling this one a relative success. I was thinking that I would make a tutorial about how to make herringbone, like an actual edited tutorial that is followable. Would people be interested in that? Because this is not a small amount of nodes. You don't need all of these just to make the basic pattern. Um, but to be honest, I probably wouldn't want any less than this amount of functionality. So, <laughs> yeah, it has marching squares. Could, could do marching squares, but I just, I don't know. I'll have to have a chat with you about marching squares so I can build one up. I think for now I'm done. Because we've got, so we've got two things now. We've got, let me save this. Um, So we've got floor herringbone and we've got floor straight as well. Oh, that's nice. Um, length deviation should be like 0.2. Oh, look at that boolean just misbehaving. I definitely need to get the marching squares thing going. Crazy. Um, it's something you'd usually do in a shader rather than geometry, more more useful for extreme close-ups. Um, is it something that you'd normally do in a shader? What am I crunching on? I've got, I'm like, it's the last bit of my carrot. It's very tasty. It's like, it's the real sweet bit now. Um, yeah, part of me thinks like, actually, sometimes it's better to just do geometry. Like I've run into problems with the shaders before where it's like, oh, got to have such high resolution anything, you know, and then you also, you can't use custom shapes. Like at least if you can make your own um, herringbone, you can like use sculpted floorboards. You can make your own stylized things and then it's like gonna automatically lay out the herringbone for you. So, Hmm. So yeah, I think there's a lot of utility in having a node group. It just seems like quite a lot of nodes for what it is. Even the straight one, because we're using the uh, accumulate field, it ends up being a surprising amount of work rather than just like doing an offset grid. But then I didn't really want to just do an offset grid. You've already got the brick node anyway. Uh, but the offset grid also isn't realistic for how you lay a floor because you just 
basically accumulate the boards. <laughs> you basically lay a floor like how accumulate works. So here we go, herringbone. Let's make sure we've got a fake user on there. That's not good. And then I think we're going to be done. Oh, I really hope it loads because otherwise we've lost all of that work. Come on, Blender. This is what happens when you use booleans. I think it's actually given up, like fully. It's not even trying, is it? <laughs> Your lessons are so strange as far as useful. I am, um, I'm glad. How did that think it took so long? Why did it nearly crash on me? I bet it's the output attributes, they're so slow. Um, yeah. Stretched cubes, array modifiers. Yeah, yep, yep. Agreed. But um, I mean, that's how I've always done them before. But that's why I'm kind of more interested in doing these extra patterns. Um, so straight one is just for completeness. But if you look at things like the side flooring floor pattern, and you get this cool stuff. You know, you could make one of these tiles manually and then just array it for sure. And they are normally done in this kind of tile pattern. But I've spacked things before where we've done entire floors, not in a tile, like in just a continuous squares and strips. So Versailles is a really nice pattern. Really nice, actually. I think it might be one of my favorite floor, uh, floor patterns. Um, now oh, look at these, mental. Uh, you do have 1.3 million, do I? That's not good, where's it even coming from? I guess it's probably the subdivide. weird it's just completely messed itself up uh, it's just these booleans because i gotta get rid of booleans we need a uh oh it's because that length is 0 0.2 i'm daft oh i've done it again okay uh length should be like one or 1 1.2 or something there we go and then the rotation Cool. Anyway, look at the spreadsheet. We're down to down to thirty-eight thousand now. That's pretty, pretty good. Bevel's actually not doing the uh, sorry, the subdivide. Oh, it's the bevel that's ruining it for everyone. Look at that. Definitely don't need two, and we need an angle limit of like. Uh, 85. Strangely still making a lot of things. Let's get rid of the bevel then. We can do the bevel later. Anyway. I have a very good course on procedural textures. Thank you. The, uh, the Canopy Games ones. It is probably due a bit of an update. Actually, probably... I kind of don't want to. People think that uh, 
I, I, there was, I did plan a second part for that course that's like more realistic cycles, shaders, and um, yeah, I don't know. I, might, I don't know. I don't mind doing it, but it's not like it's not a small amount of work to make a course. So it does just take a little bit of a commitment to be like, okay, I'm going to spend the next three weeks or the next two weeks just working on making this course. Um, so yeah, let me make sure this is a fake user. Actually, there we go. There we have it. Right. Cool. Yeah. So I would like to make, I, I told people that I was only going to make like one or two courses this year. Um, and that's just gone out the window because I've already like got one that is about to come out and then I've got one which is going to be out through YouTube and then I've got the geometry nodes for 3.0, 3.3 that will come out over summer because uh, that's the next LTS release so as soon as that one goes stable or at least as soon as that one stops getting nodes which I'm hoping is going to happen in August uh, I'm basically going to release ooh, I'm going to release a course for 3.3 LTS because my last geometry nodes course is for 2.93 which basically makes it obsolete so uh, yeah and then the spur truck course I'm probably not going to update that one now I still think it holds its own or like holds its ground so I'm pretty happy with that um, so what's what else am I doing this year yeah, I think it's going to be four courses this year, uh, which is good because I kind of, I think that's kind of the minimum that you can make an income out of, probably. Because it's not like you get seven or eight thousand per course, it's like three or four. If a course does really, really well and it goes viral on Udemy or something, then, you know, and you get a hundred thousand students and that's a different story. But if it's like a normal course and you get a few thousand pounds or whatever, then you kind of have to make five or four. That being said, it only takes like two or three weeks to make each one. So I can't really complain. Um, I do just need to utilize my time a bit better. So in the short term though, there's going to be video on... Um, pointing devices and I'll have a look at the 3D connections one that you mentioned Astrid the is it just a little 3D mouse like the little circle puck that you've got um because I always looked at that and I was like is that actually useful I feel like it's one of those things that is maybe not for blender because it's so shortcut dependent it's like so designed for keyboard and mouse um yeah, but I'll do that video. And then the Scatify video. And I was also going to do a video for Bagger Tools, the new update for the bag, because he's got the asset pack as well now. So if you know Bagger, Anto uh, Antoine Bagatoni on Twitter, he released a bunch of uh, really useful, kind of high level geometry nodes tools. But he's now additionally released a pack of assets, like generators for different stuff. So that's cool. Um, and then, what else do we need to do? Just generally tutorials. If you have any requests for tutorials, let me know. I'm going to be doing another flower one, sort of to update. I'm going to revisit some of the 2.93 ones. So we'll redo the bridge tutorial, kind of like a one-to-one -one copy, but updated. And um, we'll redo the spirograph ones, because I think people kind of liked the being eased into the maths in that way. Um, and I'll try and find a few more maths ones as well that'll be fun to make. Kind of simple surfaces. On the Spurchop course this morning, we were doing gyroids. Um, so that was kind of fun. Like we made a gyroid with, um, here we go, with Spurchop. So it's pretty simple, but it's about the tessellation. And these are just really cool because they're like one continuous one-sided or two-sided surface. Um, 
Yeah, so I might do some like uh, interesting mathematical surfaces in geometry nodes. I think that might be a fun series. But yeah, otherwise, just requests. Shoot me requests, super useful. Anyway, hey, John, <laughs> I'm just wrapping up the stream. It's, uh, there's a bit of content here today. I think I was working quite slowly, so apologies for that. I know it's taken us a little while to get through the two, the two layouts, um, but yeah. If you're an ETK user, make sure you download the latest ETK add-on as of yesterday, because uh, it's got the new distribute points in volume node. Um, so that's actually very useful. Procedural building tutorial. I reckon that I will hold, I will hold off on the procedural building tutorial because I think in all likelihood, part of the course that I do this summer will be like an in-depth look at a procedural building tutorial. Although I was thinking of doing some Patreon courses that you can like get free if you're on Patreon for like certain levels. Um, so I guess not free, but uh, but if yeah if, for Patreon. So the because somebody sent me an email the other day being like maybe do a brutalist architecture course or like um something like that you know like um buildings but specific architectural styles. So I thought that might be like might make for some interesting Patreon content because I really have. I feel like I let down my patrons because I don't really release them specific content. Um, so I would like, I'd like to give them something. Anyway, I think that's me done. John, you've been working, you've been working weekends. Make sure you don't make a habit of doing that. You gotta keep some time for yourself, keep some headspace. As long as life affords it. Anyway. I hope everyone's doing well. I will see you hopefully next Saturday, if not, then the weekend after. And uh, yeah, have a good week. Hope you're all doing well. I'll see you later.